You're watching the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Now, it's time for the Brandon Austin Show. Well, as the tournament competition heats up, that is a live look at TPC Sawgrass. And here we are. We'll be here all week, uh, right out of this new headquarters, at least for the next four days on the Brenton Austin Show. Back, golf is the backdrop, but uh, football is the main topic. <laughs> what else is new here in Jacksonville as a free agency hits a fever pitch for the Jacksonville Jaguars? Brent Martino here, Austin Lane, back in the Action Sports Shack studios. And, well, as we always say on this new venture, Hope you can hear me, Austin. I can hear you, man. You sound great. Um, how's TPC? How's the pollen out there? <laughs> the pollen's not too bad. Actually, a nice crisp morning here. Um, a good little, you know, quarter zip weather uh, for oh, us yeah. uh, out here in the in the golf world. And uh, it is kind of heating up. If you're on the sun right now, it's actually beautiful. And it will be uh, the rest of the week. It's supposed to get into the 80s later in the week. So, really, we do have a terrific week to start. I think the weekend could be a little sketchy on some of the uh, raindrops that could fall. But it uh, doesn't look like a washout at the last forecast that I saw. First alert, Weather Team will have you covered in that category. We've got you covered on some golf. We'll get ready for that. Jay Monahan talks today, the commissioner of the PGA Tour, and what a wild time it's been in golf. I don't know if wild's the word he would use. Tumultuous is probably the one many of us would use but it doesn't change this golf tournament the players championship celebrating 50 years is always fantastic so we'll get into some golf but obviously it's a backdrop and a beautiful one at that for what has transpired so far in free agency and I don't know if we should go backwards Austin or if we should go forward because I think the big story over the next three hours and maybe the day on Tuesday is going to be the Calvin Ridley watch so how about we start there before we you know, analyze what the Jaguars did on Monday. Calvin Ridley is still out there. There are several reports that the Patriots and the Jags are still very interested. Uh, Jonathan Jones from CBS Sports says that the, there's a mystery team out there. That sounds like something maybe an agent would put out to make sure. more interest in their guy. It's an interesting market right now because the draft is loaded with wide receivers. So maybe Calvin Ridley doesn't have as much of a market as we thought. Yeah, I mean, it is a little surprising, right? Especially when you talk about teams that are contenders right now that are maybe just, you know, a wide receiver two away from making that Super Bowl run or even like the Kansas City Chiefs who, you know, they could always use a receiver um, with what they have right now. I'm a little surprised it's been so quiet on the Calvin Ridley front. And the teams that are interested are really teams that, I mean, like the Patriots, I, I get it. They're they're rebuilding right now. They're, they're starting from scratch. I'm not sure if I would pay 20-something million dollars for a receiver to start from scratch again. But now keep in mind, you're going to be drafting a quarterback, whoever that quarterback is going to be. You want to bring in some guys to help him out. I get that. Um, the Carolina Panthers were a team that was kind of linked to Calvin Ridley for a little bit. I mean, I guess I get that in terms of hyping, um, helping Bryce Young and everything. But like, if I'm Calvin Ridley, and we talked about this yesterday a little bit, and the cupboard is kind of bare right now, and we're talking about the Panthers, the Titans – um, a mystery team, quote-unquote, or the Patriots, I'm going Jacksonville all day. I'm going back to the spot where I learned how you know their playbook a little bit. Um, I was getting ingrained in the system. I was starting to build a little bit of a rapport with Trevor Lawrence, and, yeah, I'm staying here. Yeah, it's interesting uh, that I could see all those things coming to fruition, like you mentioned. I, I just think it's still pretty wild that the Jags have a chance at this. At least there's a feeling that they have a chance at this. And, uh, you know, if we're going to make odds right now, Patriots, Jags, other team, let's just say that, okay, the field, if you will, the other 30. I mean, what are the odds right now that Calvin Ridley is back in Jacksonville sometime tomorrow when the league year starts? The Jaguars keep that second-round pick. They give up a third to Atlanta, which they're going to give up anyway. I mean, are you starting to feel good about it, I guess, is the point. Now, the, the fact is, he doesn't have a home yet. Yeah, I mean, especially now, like a day's man with social media and everything, like if there's rumors, you're going to hear about them, right? Like if there's a team interested or there's some deal being made, you're going to know about it before it actually goes down, you know, and Adam Schefter, Schefter reports it. The fact that we haven't heard a lot on the Kevin Ridley front, actually, I think it makes it better if you're a Jaguars fan. Because if there's not that much of interest, then the Jaguars have a really good shot of getting Kevin Ridley back. And once again, if they can get him back, 
and only sacrifice a third round pick. I mean that that is the fleece uh, of all fleeces, and, and that would be crazy. I mean, you literally broke the fourth wall, looked at the camera, and said, and laughed at Jaguar's Twitter, and said, "That's no, that's going to happen." Hey, Brent, you're getting a little nervous. I'm not getting nervous. Hey, you told me to get nervous about Josh Allen as well, and we'll get into Josh Allen in just a little bit. But, you know, what's interesting here is did everybody misplay, and, and I mean maybe the Calvin Ridley representation or maybe just us making the noise on the outside from – us here locally to across the country on the receiver market. It made sense that Ridley would be a top candidate for other teams. But again, the NFL draft is loaded with receivers each and every year, it feels like. This is no different. And it's starting to remind me a little bit the last time we were together on a show, Austin, years back when we thought the defensive end market had slipped a little bit. That was around Yannick Ngakwe time. And then if you look Mm -hmm. last year, the tight end market wasn't as robust as everybody thought. So we don't always get this right. And maybe the mix of uh, looks like T. Higgins is staying put even though he wants a trade. Doesn't seem like there are many dance partners. The Jags go get a Gabe Davis. Uh, they obviously get Duvernay as well as technically a wide receiver. Uh, not pe- many people are jumping at wide receivers right now, which indicates that they either don't like what's out there, don't want to overpay, or they do think the draft is loaded. So I guess at this moment, it kind of feels like everybody miscalculated how good the right wide receiver market would be, at least for the dollars for guys like Calvin Ridley. Yeah, and I think, once again, going back to the draft, it seems to be a very, very deep wide receiver draft. And if we look at even this past year, some of the guys that were selected in the draft in terms of wide receiver, like, I always seem like in the past, you maybe could get one or two guys, you know, in the draft that would come in and make a difference right away. But now it seems to be in terms of talent, you know, the, the, the first wide receiver taken to even, like, the sixth wide receiver taken can come in and contribute if you pick that right guy. So I think teams are seeing now – the depth of this NFL draft and the wide receiver position and saying, you know what, we can take Calvin Ridley, pay him, you know, maybe 20 something, maybe a little less now. We can try to trade for T. Higgins and give up a lot of draft capital, or we could take our chances in a pretty talented wide receiver draft class. I think obviously teams right now are leading that way. And it's it's interesting because, you know, when we're talking about the whole Yannick and Gakway thing and how the the price for the edge rushers kind of gone down, well the Brian Burns contract comes out, five years, $141 million. Now it seems like that price has gone back up again for the edge rusher. And now like there's a premium on the edge rusher position once again. So it's crazy how the market will f- fluctuate basically um, year by year depending on position. Uh, that's – Yeah, that's true, and I want to get to Josh Allen in just a moment, maybe even before we go backwards and talk about the other guys of yesterday. Uh, But one last thought on the Ridley conversation, because, again, I I just walked over here and Hey, Brett, they got to sign Calvin Ridley. They got to bring him back. I think that's something that really is top of mind among Jags fans, and I get it, and it's top of mind probably amongst the rest of the National Football League. Where does Calvin Ridley go? As it sits right now, seeing that the receiver market was not as hot maybe as, as we thought, do you think it's still in the best interest of the Jacksonville Jaguars to bring Ridley back at obviously a price that they deem fair? Or should they, like many other teams might do, just go shopping in the draft now that they've added Gabe Davis, they do have Zay Jones, they do have Christian Kirk, they do have Evan Ingram. Do they need Ridley at the cost that it will be? Or should they go younger, cheaper option in the draft? I mean, I think if Calvin could come at a, at a decent price, I still think you shore up Calvin Ridley. Um, because once again, pairing him with Gabe Davis and you know Christian Kirk and everything, and once again the, the whole we'll talk about the Gabe Davis Zay Jones situation. I think something's going to happen there. But nevertheless, if you can have Calvin Evan Ingram, Christian Kirk, you know I'm I, I'm not mad at that. So if that's the way they want to go, that's the way they want to go. But once again, it has to make sense. But I, I, if you can pay twenty one, twenty two million dollars to Calvin Ridley for two years, I think I'd rather go in the draft. Right, but if you can get him at a discount, then why not? Because once again, if the market's not going to be that high for Calvin Ridley, one would think maybe he comes back to where he's comfortable. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch. Again, I think a lot of eyes on Calvin Ridley today, a lot of ears too, and we'll uh, be 
following it and see if we get any more reports. Bottom line is the latest, if you're just jumping in, it seems like Calvin Ridley and the Jags are still dancing a little bit here. The New England Patriots are in the fold and have been for the last couple of days, along with uh, many other reports saying so. And uh, the latest report from Jonathan Jones from CBS is a mystery team involved. But it's not like there are eight teams involved in this. And the market has kind of not dried up, but certainly has not been as robust as many thought for Calvin Ridley and other wide receivers. Uh, Before, again, we get back to yesterday, the Brian Burns news of last night now piques my interest because the Josh Allen price tag seems pretty hefty, uh, Austin. I don't know if we thought it would be as hefty as this. I think it works out to about $28 million a year for Brian Burns. The reports this morning, it's a $141 million deal over five years. Last night, it was a five-year $150 million. Uh, there's a lot of money up front in the first three years of it. Is this going to be the baseline, the outline for what the Jaguars and Josh Allen's camp are going to try to knock out? He is under the franchise tag. This could take months to really work out, or it could take days now that we have a framework from a guy like Brian Burns. Yeah, I mean, in terms of $28 million a year, I mean, that's going to put Brian Burns right now. He's third. I'm sorry, he's second um, in terms of average per year in the NFL. So we see the market you know, resetting a little bit. And I was uh, under the caveat, listen, regardless of what happens in the market, like we know Josh Allen is ahead of Brian Burns. Like That's a fact. I think in terms of numbers, I think in terms of intrigue, Josh Allen is a step ahead of Brian Burns. So if Brian Burns is making 28-2 per year, well then Josh Allen, welcome to the $29, $30 million a year club. Um, you know, like it, if I'm Josh Allen and I see that deal go down, like obviously I'm, I'm, I'm licking my fingers. I, I'm excited. It, it begs the question of, if you were Brian, okay, if you were Josh Allen and, and the Jaguars and everything, and if you somehow could have got a deal done before that Brian Burns deal, how much would that have benefited you? Because I'll be honest, I wouldn't have paid twenty-eight million dollars a year for Brian Burns. Like he's making more than T.J. Watt now, which. Okay, I mean, T.J. Watt will eventually get paid again, and that's the way that it goes. I understand that. But Brian Burns is the the second highest paid edge rusher right now in the NFL. This is over Joey Bosa, over T.J. Watt, over Miles Garrett. Now, is he the second best pass rusher in the NFL or the edge rusher in the NFL? I don't think so. But the market says that he is. So if that's the case then, and I'm Josh Allen's people, I say, okay, $28 million a year. I'm going to need it probably at least 30. And that'll make Josh Allen the second highest paid edge rusher in the NFL. And if we're talking about $30 million a year, guess what, Brent? That might take some time to get done. Yeah, I, I've got a couple questions about this, and this is interesting to me because, again, there's an outline here now, and I I want to know from your vantage point, Austin, how much you think Burns and Josh Allen are kind of a comped because it's different. Burns has been maybe a bit more consistent, uh, he's got about, I think they have about the same amount of sacks in their career, but it's Josh coming off a mega year. I mean, Brian Burns coming off an eight sack year. Josh Allen's coming off a 17 and a half sack season. So it's a weird kind of one to say, oh yeah, he should get this amount or maybe a million more. It feels like he should get like a gazillion more compared to <laughs> what happened just in 2023. How do you view it? Are they comparable? And maybe, again, a little edge to Josh just based off the big year he's coming off. Yeah, I mean, very comparable. You know, Brian Burns, you look at And once again, sack numbers aren't everything, but just for the sake of the exercise, seven and a half, nine, nine, twelve and a half, eight. Right? That's pretty consistent um, in terms of Brian Burns. And then you go to Josh Allen, obviously he had that 10.5 sack season to start his rookie campaign, 2.5, 7.5, 7, and then the the monumental 17.5. Yes, very comparable, Brent, at the end of the day. Obviously in terms of age, in terms of experience, um, comparable in their own right. But that 17.5, I mean, that's that's the, the world of difference right there. Because you're only as good as your last season. Not to say that Brian Burns like underperformed last year, but you know, I mean, going from twelve and a half sacks into eight sacks on the Carolina Panthers team that was probably underwhelming a little bit. But to say you got seventeen and a half sacks, Brent, like that's that's cash money. You know, like there's no way around that. So once again, if Brian Burns right now is the second highest paid edge rusher in the NFL, I have a hard time saying that Josh Allen's gonna be banking like the is it the Nick Bosa money of thirty four million dollars a year, whatever that is something crazy 
Um, but I have Josh Allen being the second highest paid edge rusher in the NFL. All right, there, there's another part of this, uh, and this goes back to a lot of conversation last week, and we're talking about, hey, why can't they get the deal done? Why aren't they talking to Josh Allen's people earlier? Um, why couldn't they get the deal done with Josh and then tag Ridley? Uh, that Like the Giants did that last year with Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley. Well, what I tried to say a lot of times last week, and, and both for Ridley and really for Josh Allen, is they were in really good positions not just last week, by the way, over the last couple of weeks and ever since the offseason started, they were in premier positions coming off a 17 and a half sack season. And obviously the position got even better for Calvin Ridley being a light receiver market and free agency. And then other guys tagging the players that could have become free agents. And Austin, this is exactly why I think this deal is hard to get done because it's not that the Jags didn't want to get it done by last Tuesday at four o'clock. It's that most likely the Josh Allen representation was like, we ain't doing that. We're going to wait and see what happens with a guy like Brian Burns. You would want to do that if you're his agency, if you represent Josh Allen. This makes perfect sense. I would stall that thing, see what Brian Burns gets, and now my dollars just went up. Just from you and I talking last week or the last couple weeks about Josh Allen, we thought this could be north of $25 million a year, no doubt. 26 million, maybe it get up to 27 million. We weren't thinking 28, 29, or 30 million. So once this deal drops, once the cap number goes up, well, that gives more room to negotiate now, more room to go get some more for a guy like Josh Allen and his camp. So it makes sense to me that the Jaguars and the Josh Allen side of things couldn't come to an agreement last week. Yeah, I mean, obviously it does. If you're Josh Allen's people, you were in no rush. I thought you had a little bit of a bargaining chip in saying that. Hey, if you all really want to sign Calvin Ridley or you want to take Calvin Ridley, you better pay us up front. You know, now whether that was part of the conversation, whether the Jaguars offered him to try to get that Calvin Ridley franchise tag, maybe we'll never know. But obviously now it shows that waiting patiently, waiting your turn, seeing Brian Burns make all his money is only going to help Josh Allen and his people now make their money as well. Hey, a quick shout-out to Tom, by the way. I was uh, watching in Wales in uh, the U.K., so good to have you along this morning, which would be the afternoon uh, for you, Tom. Uh, Steve Boston jumps in, and uh, does the wide receiver position become the running back position all of a sudden because of the draft talent, uh, unless you're talking about those A-plus guys like Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase? I don't know about that, Austin. I, I, don't, I, I do think, and, and we said this for years and years, kids are – Better wide receivers than ever before. I think we have more good quarterbacks than ever before. And the reason is high school people now throw the football. They don't just run it. Colleges throw the football all the time. Seven on seven on the circuit is a big deal, which means receivers get better, corners get better, quarterbacks get better, more so than an offensive lineman can get better in those, well, they're not even in that setting. So I I think for years and years now, we've seen this influx of good wide receivers. We've gone from, hey, do you have one good wide receiver on an NFL team to now you better have two and maybe three to be able to be a prolific offense in the National Football League. So this is no surprise to me that we continue to see a lot of good wide receivers and that are available in the draft. I don't know if it diminishes the position to the tune of running back because the bottom line is it's still a cyclical world. And my guess is there will be a draft or two that comes up in the next five years. And it's a little bit light on the wide receiver front for whatever reason. So I don't think it will be impacted. But uh, what do you think, Austin? Do you think this is a position that could get watered down a little bit at some point and cost these guys money the way the uh, uh, running back position has? I mean, in the long run, could it cost money in terms of making your, your big-time contracts? Possibly, because it seems like every single year now in the draft, you know, you're getting more talented and talented wide receivers. I'm not ready to call it and compare it to the running back position quite yet, though, because I still feel like the running back position got super disrespected. What happened to Saquon and things like that? And listen, it's not without worry, right? I mean, when you look at Elliott getting that big-time contract in Dallas, and he never really lived up to that. I get where there was some hesitation. There was some caution in terms of paying a running back a lot of money now. But, man, you talk about the wide receiver position where you just can't replace a a number one wide receiver with, like, a couple mid-round guys, it seems like. Like, teams are always trying to, like, replace, like, even like Saquon Barkley. Okay, we can replace Saquon. We can get a third down back. We can get a a goal line back, and we can try to replace him. Uh, good luck to do the, uh, to the Giants, by the way, in doing that because Daniel Jones can't tote the rock 30 times a game like you want him to. So we'll see what happens in New York. <laughs> but nevertheless, 
I, I do feel like the wide receiver position is going to be a little more coveted. It's a pass-first league, obviously, than the running back position. All right, uh, switch focus just for a minute, and then we'll get through all these guys that the Jags brought in uh, on Monday or will bring in and, and the domino effect of that. But just an overview before we hit a, our first break. Uh, we're going along here at DPC Sawgrass on a Tuesday in this legal tampering time at free agency, and the Jaguars have been probably busier than most people thought. I don't know what you thought about it, Austin, but I didn't think they'd be this busy in the first 24 hours or so. And the elephant in the room might be, hey, uh, did Trent Bulky just do a good job? Like, is Trent Bulky actually doing a good job? Are people going to say that in the last 24 hours of what we've just seen? Covering some holes, the deals that he made, the maneuverability of the money and dollars and cap. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised that the Jaguars were able to sign this many players. I thought they were, like, kind of against the cap a little bit. So, once again, it goes to show that the salary cap is not real. It is a conspiracy. We should investigate a little more. No, I mean, I'm, I'm happy so far. You know, it started with the center. I mean, well, it started with Mac Jones, and you know how I felt about that. But then it gradually got better. You sign your center. You get a couple guys in the secondary. Um yeah, overall, uh, I think so far, so good. We'll see with the wide receiver position because, once again, like I, I get the Gabe Davis thing and some people are excited. Some people are maybe scratching their heads a little bit. You just can't say you're done with Gabe Davis and say, all right, our wide receiver room is set, right? Because I think the writing's on the wall. He, he's not a wide receiver one. Yeah, he's a deep threat. He allows you to do some things. But you're crazy if you think you can just say, all right, we took care of our wide receivers. Trevor's happy, offensive line shored up, defense looking good, we're all done here. No, there's still some work that needs to be done. Yeah, I would say there's uh, probably a good amount of work that still needs to be done. What do the signings say for the Jacksonville Jaguars? Let's talk about that when we come back. Take a first time out here on the Brenton Austin Show on our Action Sports Jacks 24-7 network. Of course, you can uh, find us on all the social media channels, as you have done and continue to do, but also on our new Action News Jacks app. Uh, right there, just click video, and you will see our Action Sports Jacks 24-7 link, and also on actionnewsjacks.com, another place to get us. TPC Sawgrass, the place to be. This week, the Players' Championship on the horizon. Practice rounds today. Fans, welcome today. Military appreciation night tonight. Cole Swindell will be here playing. The festivities begin here in Ponte Vedra. I like to say everybody has a story, and sometimes we're a part of other people's stories. That's the case here at Nimnick Buick GMC my family, and the Nimdick family. We've purchased six different vehicles from Nimdick Buick GMC. Maybe you're in the market for a truck. Well, let me tell you about the GMC Sierra. I absolutely love mine. I've had a couple of these. This one's a 2020, but right now on 2024 GMC Sierras here at Nimdick Buick GMC, there's special financing. A year ago, we purchased a GMC Terrain for the kids. Financing rates as low as 2.9% right now for eligible buyers on Terrains and Acadias 2. Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. Nimnik Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom. Meet the fantastic people. Or shop online at NimnikBuickGMC.com. Nimnik, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. The friendliest golf course in town, the Golf Club at Southampton. Local golfers have no shortage of options when it comes to picking a course to play here in Northeast Florida year round. Yet time and time again, I find myself here at the Golf Club at Southampton. Easy to get to off 210 in St. Johns County. It's family owned and operated and renowned for being one of the area's most player friendly. That's just one of the reasons we hold the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18 charity golf tournament here each fall. The Mark McCumber design layout is great for all skill levels of golfers, from the guys who bomb it a mile on the range to golfers like me who are just happy to put it in the fairway, which Southampton has very accommodating fairways. And if you need new clubs, come down to the Pro Shop. They'll fit you up and get you a nice new set, like they did for me. For more information on membership or to book a tee time and see for yourself, head over to GolfSouthampton.com or call the clubhouse at 904-287-7529. The Golf Club at Southampton. It's the official home of the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18. Make it your home for golf too. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, 
it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who's coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. Thank you for making Action News Jacks the best in Jacks and Folio's Best of Jacks 2023. Best TV station, best TV newscast, best TV morning show. Chandler Morgan voted best TV anchor. The Chief Mike Burrish voted best meteorologist. And Brent Martineau voted best TV sports anchor. And while you're on the go, best news website and best local blog, the Burrish blog. Thank you for making Action News Jacks local coverage you can count on. Stop by the new car sales event happening right now at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. $500 in a job gets you in a Kia. And Michael Monsiero and the staff here at Greenway Kia are here to make it happen. Experience great customer service and become a part of their family. And while you're here, check out the Kia Forte GT line. Full of comfort, innovation, and has driver assist technology. And how about the affordable new Kia EV9, the fast charging, all new electrical SUV with high performance capability, three row seats with 304 miles of maximum driving range. Over 1,000 new Kia models, some starting at $199 a month. And as always, get the 10 year, 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty. Come shop at Greenway Kia at the Avenues, located on Phillips Highway. You can shop online at GreenwayKiaAtTheAvenues.com. And remember, $500 and a job gets you in a Kia at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Hey, there's a look at the 18th hole here at TPC Sawgrass, a stadium course. I can't make out who the groups are right now, but Liv Tassily uh, giving us a live look there at the 18th, one of the great finishing holes on the PGA Tour and really in the world of golf at 16, 17, 18. The gauntlet will definitely factor in to the 2024 Players Championship. And as you can tell, just a beautiful day. I mean, Christmas morning gives way to just uh, sunny skies and really nice temperatures. You can wear shorts or pants today if you want. Like, it's that kind of day now out here. And uh, the festivities really get underway in Ponte Vedra for the 2024 Players Championship. By the way, we have specials every night, 11.15 on CBS 47, Fox 30. And uh, we, of course, will be out here with our show 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Brent and Austin Show, Brent Martineau, along with Austin Lane. Austin back in the studios today, along with Casey Kurtz. We appreciate him being along again today. Jason Hamby will be back from a trip uh, tomorrow, uh, we believe, so he will join us again. All right, Austin, uh, back to the Jaguars moves. And we were talking, hey, did Trent Paulke do a pretty good job? Uh, and I don't think that's something that a lot of people <laughs> always will readily admit. But uh, the bottom line is way more active for the Jaguars on day one of this legal tampering, I think, than anybody thought. If you see some of the marginal deals that the Jags did, I mean, the money's so crazy now in the NFL. The Jaguars did more marginal deals. Now, they paid a pretty steep price, I would say, for Gabe Davis. But even that, Austin, at $13 million a year, is not a highly paid wide receiver in today's NFL. No, and especially for what he can possibly give you in terms of, you know, that, that big play ability, that deep threat capability. You know, I mean, with Gabe Davis, um, the story's plain as day. If you ever follow fantasy, you know exactly who Gabe Davis is. This is a guy who can give you four touchdowns in one game. 
uh, and the next game just just kind of vanished a little bit, you know, and and drop balls um, were an issue with him in the past. Obviously, we talk about drop balls here in Jacksonville. Um, they've had their fair share. So, I mean, you know, it, it does. Th- th- there are a couple concerns, I would say. But once again, in terms of that that big play ability, you like that for Trevor Lawrence. Well, it, it, here's the deal. First of all, you like anything they do for Trevor Lawrence, right? We continue to say that, and I think that's a, a very positive thing. The other part of this is, you're right, it's big playability. I think it's 16.9 yards per catch for Gabe Davis. And then there's a hidden factor in here. He's a good run blocker, too. Uh, and he also has worked with Chad Hall, who's a receivers coach, so there's some familiarity there. Uh, there's, there's other elements of his game than just big play threat, but uh, you got to believe... That's really the primary reason they're willing to give him a three-year, $39 million deal. Right, Austin? No, for sure, man. Sometimes you got to take that top off. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're in the YMCA, you're getting a good pump, you got to take that top off. That's what I was doing today. Brent, get my bench press on, (laughs) if you will. So, yeah, with Gabe Davis, listen, he has that deep playability. And I think you saw that with Calvin Ridley last year a little bit, and I get it. Calvin Ridley, in terms of numbers, maybe weren't what you weren't accustomed to, but keep in mind how many penalties that guy drew in terms of the, the holds, the pass interferences and everything, well, Gabe Davis can be that same guy and probably even burn guys a little more, too, on, on that deep ball. All right, so uh, Gabe Davis is the receiver, kind of like the top-name guy to go help Trevor Lawrence, the, the insurance policy at the very least for Calvin Ridley. There's still a lot of talk out there that Calvin Ridley could – come back to Jacksonville. So I guess the next phase of this, Austin, is what's the domino effect here? Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, Travis Etienne, now Gabe Davis, Zay Jones. It sounds like if I'm hinting at what you've been saying in the first 35 minutes or so, it doesn't sound like you believe Zay Jones is going to be on this roster. What do you think about the future of Zay Jones here in Jacksonville? Yeah, to me, it's hard to fathom – where exactly Zay Jones will fit in this offense the way that it looks right now. Like, obviously right now he's, yeah, he's one of the pieces that are starting. But like I said, I mean, whether or not you believe in Gabe Davis, that's fine. But we can all agree that Gabe Davis is not a number one receiver. He's not going to be the go-to guy. He's, they had Stephon Diggs in Buffalo for a reason. So going forward, that has to be addressed. So whether it's Calvin Ridley, whether it's T. Higgins, or whether it's getting a wide receiver early on in the draft, they still have to address that wide receiver one. And in doing that, well, there's got to be an odd man out. And it's not going to be Christian Kirk, obviously. Well, you just brought in Gabe Davis. So unfortunately, I think Zay Jones is going to be the odd man out because you're not going to pay him that much money, I feel like, to be a fourth receiver. There's no way. He's about a $4 million cap savings, I think, if I saw that correctly. So the Jags could save a little bit of money there. Uh, They'll eat some of the Zay Jones dollars if that happens. Uh, There are still a couple of financial moves the Jags actually could make if they want to. Uh, Zay being one of them if they end up bringing Calvin Ridley back uh, or if they want to go somewhere in the draft. The other move uh, that they could make to clear quite a bit of space is Cam Robinson. We'll see if they're trying to still work out a trade if they plan on just keeping cam if he's not even being floating out there what does that mean for walker little i think these are the domino effects conversations that we're having because of some of the signings that they have made some of the people that they continue to have on the roster Uh, again all eyes on what are they going to do the rest of this week with especially calvin ridley i think that changes how soon they make the next move and potentially what they do in the draft. So Gabe Davis, Mitch Morse, we talked about quite a bit yesterday. And then the Jaguars go after the secondary uh, a bit with Ronald Darby and also Darnell Savage. And this was wild. The Darby one pretty expected. I don't know if you have strong feelings about that. I think some people like it. If you look at some of the PFF metrics, maybe the Jags believe in those, Austin, because this looks like a pretty good fit. And I'm going to trust Ryan Nielsen here because I think the way he wants his corners to play, he's obviously identifying a guy that could fit into his system well. And maybe he feels that uh, Darby fits in better than Darius Williams. Darius Williams obviously would have cost you more money. Darius Williams, by the way, agreeing to a three-year deal to go back to the LA Rams, it sounds like, according to reports this morning how do you feel about Ronald Darby before we get into Savage yeah I like Ronald Darby a lot I like him for a couple reasons number one coming from Baltimore where he was essentially asked to replace Marlon Humphrey um, who got hurt a lot so Darby comes in um, and really does his thing it wasn't really an issue and what I like about Darby and it shows what Nielsen's looking for 
Darby is really good at press coverage, right? He's he's a physical corner. He gets in your face. And to me, that's like the Ryan Nielsen calling card. And that's what I feel like you'll see a lot from this defense in terms of being aggressive and having corners that aren't afraid to come up on the line of scrimmage and, and pop somebody in the mouth. And I think Ronald Darby can do that. So, And keep in mind, I think he's kind of versatile as well. So we're not sure nickel, two-corner, whatever the case may be. But there's a lot to like, I feel like, about Ronald Darby. Well, there's a lot of versatility, I think, in that secondary right now, and Savage adds to it as well. And this is this one was wild to me, Austin, because we had talked about this, and, and we were just curious, right? Where do you upgrade the positions? You lose uh, Rayshon Jenkins, no surprise. He's going to be a cap casualty there. And you save a little money there, maybe you get more consistency. You go to the young guy, Antonio Johnson, who you drafted. Okay, that's the way this is supposed to work. Antonio Johnson, though, can play safety spot. He can play the nickel spot. He's flexible, versatile as well. And then they go bring in Savage out of Green Bay, which really was, to me, a little bit out of nowhere. This is a halfway decent deal I think I saw it's like a 21 million dollar deal like 7 million per year so this isn't just like a band-aid C-level guy I mean this is a guy they expect to use and contribute and play and expect a lot from how surprising was the safety move and uh, it's just a bit ironic that we were talking about it last week that hey they might be all set at safety but the Jags say no we're not we can do better no if you have a chance to upgrade I said you have a chance to upgrade and I think you know you've definitely upgraded now with Savage, it begs the question of what's the plan for Antonio Johnson then? Are you keeping Antonio Johnson at safety or do you move him to corner? I guess time will tell for that. The Savage signing is interesting because I truly feel like if you take out the 49ers game, the Savage's last game in Green Bay, he's probably still in Green Bay. I mean, this dude had a pick six against Dallas, helped him seal the deal, played some of his best football uh, in a meaningful playoff game, beating the Dallas Cowboys. I think he had like the highest PFF grade of that game, if I'm not mistaken. And then he comes against San Francisco, miss, huge missed block on Christian McCaffrey. Um, that kind of cost him a little bit. Gives up the touchdown to George Kittle. And, you know, this has kind of always been Savage's M.O., and trust me, I feel like I have – I mean, obviously I cover the Jaguars, and, and that's the team that I know. I have a good vibe for Green Bay just because of all my friends that are in always my, my text messages, even though I don't ask them to be, talk to me about like you know players and everything. And, and with Savage, this is a guy who's got the ball instincts. He has the IQ. He has the leadership. The one thing that's lacking that you hope that Ryan Nielsen can get from this guy is his tackling ability and his ability to be a little more aggressive, run downhill, and make those plays. That was lacking last year a little bit from Savage. Now, once again, what are you going to ask him to do? Are you going to stack the box with him? You're going to have him play a little more in the back? We'll see how this Ryan Nielsen defense is going to cater to Savage. But from ball skills, athletic skills, he has all that in spades. Now, can he bring the physicality part, and can he learn how to tackle? Yeah, he's an interesting guy. I mean, he's 2019 first-round guy out of Maryland. Uh, I think he made the all-rookie team that year. He's a fast guy, Austin, 4-3-6 uh, at the 40 back then. So, and you mentioned it, ball skills, nine interceptions. He obviously has that big touchdown last year in the playoffs. So, I, I guess, I don't know. If you're sitting there and you're, you're, you're advising – um, and I know you're not like meeting rooms. We don't know exactly what they want to do with Ryan Nielsen's defense, but you got a feel for it. I'm trying to put the puzzle piece together. And you know you have Cisco back there. Now you have Savage. You're invested there. You got some veterans. I like the veteran play. Uh, you definitely have depth. You've got Daniel Thomas back at special teams, and for now at least Andrew Wingard, who's under contract. You have Antonio Johnson, who's a young player. Uh, you go get Ronald Darby. You have Tyson Campbell already. I'm assuming they're going to continue to add, especially at the corner spot in the draft. But I think the biggest thing I have in my mind is we saw flashes and there's a kind of a likability about Antonio Johnson. I thought he might be onto something. I really don't know where he fits in all this. Is he a depth play or is he going to be a guy that battles it out and plays in the nickel spot and, and you can get him on the field more? Uh, are they going to use like this three safety look sometimes like the Jags did under Mike Caldwell? Uh, I, I, I'm trying to figure out where Johnson plays because I think there's a big segment of the fan base, and maybe I'm included here, that would like to see more from him. Yeah, especially a guy that really showed some promise, right? You just don't want to put a cap on that now and say, oh, okay, we're going to – I mean, yeah, I get it. Is it an upgrade right now with, with Savage over Johnson? Sure. But that's not to say that Johnson can't turn into a, a very quality player. He just needs more reps. So 
I do hope that Johnson somehow fits in this picture, whether it's a three safety set, whether it's him playing some nickel, I'm not sure. But you got to imagine that he's going to at least compete for starting reps in training camp. Yeah, I'd be uh, interested to see um, what what happens with Antonio Johnson, what they say about it. And and obviously the draft uh, will be a, a big indicator uh, as well. So the Jags get a center. They get a wide receiver. Uh, they obviously get Duvernay w- from Baltimore, who's really a return specialist, 26-year-old guy. Listen, I'm a big fan of Jamal Agnew. I thought Jamal Agnew did a lot of really good things here, Austin. But obviously this goes a little bit younger, maybe even a slightly cheaper option, although it's a pretty good investment in special teams. The Jags show and they value it. And Duvernay's been a pretty good player for the Baltimore Ravens. Obviously, they're always pretty good at special teams, too. Uh, do you like the move to Duvernay to kind of get a little bit younger at that spot? Yeah, I mean, I thought Jamal Agnew had the, the tweet of the, of the day when he posted the Spider-Man meme um, pointing to the other Spider-Man because he understands what it is. And, yeah, listen, I love the play here. Dynamic, fast, special teams weapon. But I hope they don't make the same mistake with him as they did with Jamal Agnew. And that's playing him too much on the offense, right? Like Baltimore this past season, they, they, they regressed Duvernay a little bit in terms of what he saw in wide receiver reps. I don't need Duvernay to run five, six, seven routes a game. All right, What I need him to do is to be a weapon on special teams, and that's it. I'm confident with, the, with the Christian Kirk. I'm confident with Gabe Davis. I'm confident with whoever they draft or bring in in terms of wide receiver number one. We don't need this guy to get you know 10 touches a game or whatever just to keep defenses on their toes. Let him do what he does, and that's being a special teams ace, and then let him do from there. Yeah, that's... I, fans didn't love the fact that they were using Jamal Agnew so much on offense, but I got to tell you, Austin, like I think at times they had to. You know, I, I thought I, I'm a I'm probably a bit biased here. I'm really a big fan of Jamal. I also think people forget like this dude was a highlight reel for the Jags over three years. I mean, even when the Jags weren't having highlights in that urban year, he was the guy. He was catching a great ball down the sideline. He was returning kicks. Like he was the guy that kept this thing somewhat interesting. And then when guys would go out, they would need to use Jamal Agnew. So like I get the main role, but. The bottom line is, I think they had to use him at times based on some situations. He fell out of favor a little bit with the fan base because of some of the fumbles uh, that crept up, including the Kansas City game, maybe even twice. I think it was the other Kansas City game in the regular season this past year. But, I mean, overall, I thought Jamal Agnew was a hell of a player. Uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they got a lot of value out of that pick. Remember, that was one of the first picks of the Urban Meyer-Trent Balky era. that They targeted Jamal Agnew. Um, I think he might have been the first free agent signing for the the Jags. It was either him or, like, Rudy Ford. They targeted special teams. I thought Agnew was terrific over the years for the Jags. No, he was fantastic, man. A a very dynamic playmaker, obviously, uh, against the Cardinals, right? He had that kickoff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gus Johnson call. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a big play, obviously. No, the, like, listen, the, the dude had some great – obviously, he had a couple bad plays, too, that Jaguars fans are going to remember. But once again, I, I just felt like, you know, he wasn't the biggest guy and, you know, a little injury prone. And once he maybe had to step in because they had no other options. I just didn't like towards the end how they were using him, getting him like three or four touches a game, it seemed like. I just hope when Dubernay comes in, they understand what the what the role is, what he has to do and don't try to put too much on his plate. All right, one more thought about that, and it does go back to Duvernay a little bit, and and I want to just get your thought on how important this is because, you know, special teams was a part of this. Uh, If you look at what they did with Duvernay, uh, but also they tried to get Lutz and that – 180 and back to Denver he went very reminiscent of the whole Tyson Alualu thing in, in some way shape or form so that was kind of odd but, but again these are reports these aren't done deals until the league year uh, starts for a reason but I thought Jamal Agnew when the Jags had him they had like the best return man in the game Austin uh, where do you think Duvernay is on that scope and because you don't want to lose right I mean again Agnew is as good as it gets and, and maybe that's a little bit debatable, but he's definitely top two or three guy uh, in the National Football League. He, he delivered so many times. Again, I don't want people to lose sight of that. When they needed a spark, he would have a big return. I mean, he helped win many games, even in 2022, for the Jacksonville Jaguars that turned those games or turned field position that really helped this football team out. Can Duvernay do that? Uh, does he excite you to that degree for the Jags? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think he's a he's a top quality return man. So I think he can absolutely mimic some of the things um, that Agnew did here and offer some electric plays when they need it. All right, let's uh, take a time out here uh, from the Players' Championship, TPC Sawgrass. Uh, we are just kind of hit on all the things the Jaguars have done and what more they can do. And on the horizon still is the draft, of course, uh, in Jacksonville. Jags will pick number 17. And I'm curious about the moves over the last 24 hours and maybe more moves to come. How does that look now? There's one position for sure we know the Jags aren't going to chase, but do they still need to chase some of these other positions that they even are band-aiding up at the very least here in free agency? The Miller Electric Center, that's where the headquarters are, the Jacksonville Jaguars. A lot going on in that building. Very active, 24 hours or so for Trent Baalke in the front office. community 70 years ago by a group of Florida Blue employees and the mission still is to inspire financial wellness and give you a financially fit lifestyle in here they are more than just a bank you can find a live in the community providing financial education to our youth sharing programs that are geared toward building credit and rebuilding credit and supporting causes with amazing organizations like the American Lung Association this March, Alive Credit Union will be back for the sixth time as a longtime sponsor of the American Lung Association's Fight for Air Climb. The event is March 23rd downtown. Get your team of climbers, family, friends, co-workers. The event will be emceed by Action News Jax's Garrett Biedenbaugh. Be a part of our community and become a member of Alive Credit Union today. Find out the many ways you can be inspired in financial wellness at alivecu.coop. Navigating to that perfect car can be a daunting task. Trust me, I understand, but if you want to find the perfect blend of sales and service for your automotive needs, look no further than the Tom Bush family of dealerships. Here at Tom Bush, they do things right. Dating back to 1970, they've been a staple in the community, giving back and keeping everything local. With four different brands to choose from, BMW, Mazda, Volkswagen, and many, there's a car for every member of the family, and the customer service is second to none. Looking to add an electric vehicle to your fleet, Tom Bush remains at the forefront of new technology with plenty of staff on hand to walk you through the future of driving and help eligible customers file for that EV tax credit. Whether you're looking for your future driver's first car or you want to step up to luxury and arrive in style, the Tom Bush family of dealership is the only stop that you need to make. Stop by the showroom or check out the inventory at TomBush.com. Go where all the pros go. Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute takes care of athletes at the highest level, like the Jacksonville Jaguars players. They will take care of you, too. Our team covers a lot of teams here in Jacksonville. FSCJ, JU, the Axemen, the Jumbo Shrimp, the Sharks, and, of course, the Jacksonville Jaguars. JOI covers all those teams as well. And then there's youth sports. My kids play baseball and softball. And whenever we have an injury question, the first call is to JOI. Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute has been serving Jacksonville for 30 years and they have over 30 specially trained physicians and assistants at five locations in the area. If your injury is specific to an area of the body, JOI has a specialist. They also are leaders in robotic surgery, joint replacement, and sports medicine. JOI Rehab has 13 locations and 90 therapists to get you better. Comprehensive care with caring physicians and staff at JOI. From youth sports to high school, college, and the pros, Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute, JOI. Go where all the pros go. Get outside. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Make friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes! Learn life lessons with the first team. Golf is kind of like life in a way. You can take some stuff you learn on the course and take that and use it in every single day life. Donate to First Tee's Play Day campaign and everybody wins. For every $10 you've donated, you're entered to win a free round with a buddy. At the stadium of course, home of the players with this guy, Len Matisse. Scan the code on your screen or visit actionnewsjacks.com to learn more. I'm Action News Shacks First Alert Meteorologist Garrett Beaton. While the sun is up and it's going to be a beautiful day. Sometimes you just need a day to yourself. And Garrett's First Alert Forecast makes sure you're ready to go out and enjoy. Garrett and the Action News Jacks This Morning team helping you start your morning right. 
Discover how good your water can be with a new Kinetico softener and drinking water system. Kinetico's twin tank non-electric softeners are the most efficient softeners available, and their drinking water systems remove up to 99% of contaminants. We know that at our home. You can find out as well. Right now, you can save $1,000 or more when you bundle the Kinetico Premier softener with a Kinetico K5 drinking water system. The experts at CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing will test your water for free and determine your water score. Don't know your water score? Well, CGC will find out and recommend the appropriate Kinetico water treatment solutions to improve it. The higher your water score, the better your water. Call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com. That's 904-552-1242, cgcwater.com. Financing options are available with approved credit. CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I'm a proud customer of CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing, an authorized independent Kinetico dealer. Florida license number CFC one one four three two five seven nine. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks twenty four seven network. Well, another look at uh, TPC Sawgrass, and I think you know that hole, the famous 17th hole, 50 years here at the Players. I was watching some historic stuff about building this golf course. It's pretty amazing uh, where this was back in uh, the late 70s, early 80s, and obviously moved to TPC Sawgrass in 82 before it was at Sawgrass Country Club, and now 50 years at the Players' Championship, and could that hole decide the golf tournament here this week? It has many a times... uh, Good and bad. The 17th hole, iconic, uh, of course, not just here in the state of Florida, in the United States, but across the world. That's why they now charge like $880 to play this course uh, for a round of golf. Austin, you jump in on that? Absolutely. And speaking of iconic, Becky Lynch last night with Rhea Ripley going on at WrestleMania. (laughs) What a showdown. What a promo, Brent. Uh, Wrestling fans are super excited for that one. First time I've heard Becky Lynch's name in a while. Uh, this is this is going to be such a boon this week for the sport of wrestling. And how many times you mention it? Oh yeah, I mean it, it's going to be its own little separate entity. So let's make sure that we, we you know we steal those reels. WrestleMania is coming up, Brent. Trying to bump up those numbers a little bit. If you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> when is WrestleMania this year? Uh April? sometime in April. Yeah, yeah. It'll be in a. Uh, yeah, Philadelphia. So you know, grease the light poles. I know we, we tell this story uh, quite a bit, but you know, it still is pretty amazing. And and I I think you almost have to bring it up every year. This is where, at least from a sports standpoint, and from uh, for us, but maybe around the world. I mean, the NBA, and then this, the Players Championship. But this was the first the like major event to just pause. Uh, when it comes to uh, the pandemic and everything stopped. They played round one. They shut the doors and said, we're out and we're done. And the sports world shut down. And then it followed suit that the rest of the world uh, seemingly shut down with the pandemic. So that was wild. And on the heels of that, we were talking about WrestleMania. We we're doing a show live in the afternoon on ESPN 690. And we didn't stop talking about WrestleMania because WrestleMania had been canceled that afternoon. And so we just had like the most people we had ever had on because the wrestling fans couldn't believe that they were going to lose WrestleMania, right? I mean, Brent, yeah, absolutely. You know, like I, I get it. You know, it could be more of, of a niche kind of fan base in terms of wrestling if you want to compare it to golf. But at the end of the day, the numbers speak for themselves, all right? If you, if you wants to go to the Action Sports <laughs> Jacks YouTube page, click on that popular tab, and let's see who has the number one video and the number two video in terms of most popularity. <laughs> oh, what's this? A one-on-one interview with a- AEW's Maxwell Jacob Freeman, a.k.a. MJF, coming in at 36,000 views. Uh, but then, what, probably like a, like a Jalen Ramsey video or some kind of, like, I don't know, NASCAR or, or maybe some players, Hole 17, maybe Bubba said something. Nah, number two, two, Hikaru Shida interview at AEW, double or nothing, four minutes long, 33,000 viewers, Brent, one and two in terms of the most popular on the Action Sports Jacks page, courtesy of yours truly. So, you're welcome. Well, thank you. And I didn't know you ever looked back at the numbers. I thought I was the only one crunching numbers around here hey, to the tune of I, like 1.2 million impressions in the first month of this thing. But, oh, uh, no. well, maybe maybe you're keeping hey. scoreboard, too. I like it. Brent, I was a free agent, right? I had to I had to talk some numbers here. I had to talk stats. 
Uh, but we're already getting some chat. More WWE talks. SmackDown coming to town in May. Bummed out Chad Gable isn't getting his uh, title shot at WrestleMania. Here we go. Yeah, let's go, man. I mean, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, it could have been a triple threat. You know, Chad Gable, Sami Zayn, and Gunther. Uh, unfortunately, not going to happen that way now. Listen, I think Chad Gable, like, I get it in terms of the size and stature, a little on the shorter side, but in terms of a pure wrestler, there's nobody better than the WWE right now. And, like, him and Gunther have already had some legendary matches. I love Sami Zayn, man. I love the character. I just kind of love the, 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 the everyday kind of vibe that Sami gives off. Obviously, he's cooled down a lot since he um, since he left, you know, Roman Reigns and the bloodline and everything. I get showcasing him at WrestleMania, but you got to have something with Chad, man, because from a talent perspective, in terms of pure wrestling, he might be the best on the roster. Do you think at WrestleMania, John Cena will have clothes on? <laughs> you would hope so, right? Like, John, what are you? Come on, man. Hey, I mean, I get it. Hey, listen, I get, man. Whatever. If- I got to be honest with you. If I looked like that, I'd probably be doing that show every day like that. Yeah, that's a good point, man. That's a good point. I guess if you got it, <laughs> flaunt it. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, ESPN body issue, I'm waiting. <laughs> um, hey, uh, we, uh, we've we actually got some interesting sound around the world of football. Uh, a big contract, but the way to start off a news conference was kind of interesting um, in Chicago. We'll get to that in the next hour. And I do want to talk about how free agency so far has shaped uh, what the Jaguars might do in the NFL draft. Uh, quick seg there. Let's get to uh, a break in the top of the hour. Uh, and uh, we'll come back, talk obviously a lot more about the, the NFL and also uh, what the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to do next and what's the latest coming out of the NFL because it's not just here in Jacksonville. It's been a busy time. The New York Giants are making a lot of moves and uh, a lot of others too. Congratulations to uh, everyone who participated in the hate this year for 2024 at Sawgrass Country Club right across the street. Some of the best college golfers in the world. Robbie Higgins had a really nice outing uh, for the UNF Ospreys. You can check out all the results at unfospreys.com. In Northeast Florida, we love hanging out on the back patio, maybe grilling out lunch or dinner with the family, enjoying the good weather, or maybe enjoying the big game on the TV, or maybe your favorite team in town, the Action Sports Jacks team. This is great, except for when it's really hot or the bugs start coming out. But what if you didn't have to worry about that? Titan Outdoor Solutions will make your outdoor area a comfortable spot, any time of the day, any time of the year. This makes too much sense. Titan Outdoor Solutions can give your home an upgrade. Customized pergolas, awnings, controlled shade, even retractable screens. The solution to beating the heat and the bugs and getting more use out of your home is Titan Outdoor Solutions. And this can even help prevent storm damage at your home. Living in Florida and living in your home is already good. Now make it great. Quality products, custom work, locally owned and operated. Visit TitanShuttersAndScreens.com or call 904-484-7580. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who's coming to your house. You know they will be well-trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. I've been forecasting the weather for a long time, and no matter where I go, I always get asked the same question. Hey Mike, what's the weather going to be like? Hey Mike. Hey Mike. Mike, hey, what's the weather going to be like? I don't mind being asked because I always have the answer. Great day for a perfect round of golf. Hey, a little rain later today. So go ahead, ask me. Hey Mike, I'm heading out. What's the weather like tonight? It's the same question, even at home. 
Mike Burrish. He's got your weather answer on Action News Jax. I like to say everybody has a story, and sometimes we're a part of other people's stories. That's the case here at Nimnick Buick GMC. My family and the Nimnick family. We've purchased six different vehicles from Nimnick Buick GMC. Maybe you're in the market for a truck. Well, let me tell you about the GMC Sierra. I absolutely love mine. I've had a couple of these. This one's a 2020, but right now on 2024 GMC Sierras here at Nimnick Buick GMC, there's special financing. A year ago, we purchased a GMC Terrain for the kids. Financing rates as low as 2.9% right now for eligible buyers on Terrains and Acadias 2. Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. Nimnick Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom. Meet the fantastic people. Or shop online at NimnickBuickGMC.com. Nimnick, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Alive Credit Union cares about our community. After all, it was founded by people in our community 70 years ago by a group of Florida Blue employees. And the mission still is to inspire financial wellness and give you a financially fit lifestyle. In here, they are more than just a bank. You can find Alive in the community providing financial education to our youth, sharing programs that are geared toward building credit and rebuilding credit, and supporting causes with amazing organizations like the American Lung Association. This March, Alive Credit Union will be back for the sixth time as a longtime sponsor of the American Lung Association's Fight for Air Climb. The event is March 23rd downtown. Get your team of climbers, family, friends, co-workers. The event will be emceed by Action News Jax's Garrett Biedenbaugh. Be a part of our community and become a member of Alive Credit Union today. Find out the many ways you can be inspired in financial wellness at AliveCU. .coop. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24 7 Network. Well, another live look here at TPC Sawgrass. Liv taking us all around the course today, and now she's at the tee box on the 18th hole. I still can't uh, tell who they're waiting on what group, but obviously some of the golfers out there this morning. Uh, practice rounds underway, and one of the best fields in golf, ready to tee it up on Thursday. Scotty Scheffler will be the favorite, world number one, coming off a big performance at Bay Hill in Orlando this past weekend. And the bottom line is, when it comes to Scotty, if he putts, it's over. Uh, it does have a little bit of a Tiger feel back in the day, uh, just like that. But uh, beautiful day here at TPC Sawgrass, the Players' Championship Stadium course. Great day to be out here because it's kind of quiet. Some fans here. It'll obviously ramp up later today for Military Appreciation Night, so get ready to fight some of the traffic for the Cole Swindell concert as well. And then uh, another day of practice rounds tomorrow, a lot of fun festivities, and then, of course, the tournament uh, kicks off on Thursday. Brent Martino here, Austin Lane back in the studio. Brent and Austin show. Casey Kurtz along as well. And uh, what, what you want to talk more about? Wrestling, well, just no. because I mentioned golf on the way back. No, I, just wanna, hey, I wanna talk about we need to tell Liv to tell some of those older dudes out there to start stretching and do some mobility exercises, man, because those guys were <laughs> hobbling down that hill and we were one Aaron <laughs> Rodgers slip away from a blown out Achilles, man. So Liv, get out there, show some chewy Yeah, look hang on. Some will be walking down in a second. All right, that's a steep grade incline right there, and I saw this dude hobbling. <laughs> Hobbling, you guys. Use your mobility drills. Well, at, Stretch out a little bit. As you're texting, maybe we should stay on this with Liv because she just uh, texted guy us and left, said, guy left, just guy missed the blue kid. hat's going down. Wait, I'm sorry, but go ahead. <laughs> she said, just missed a kid busting his ass <laughs> down the hill. <laughs> so I guess saying. one kid did bite it. <laughs> yeah. Kids probably wearing khakis too. I'm going to get a Tide pen out. He's got grass stains all over himself. Liv, get out there and start doing some mobility stuff. It's too early in the morning for this right now. Like I guy's struggling. This guy's struggling. <laughs> 
I love it. We should just take the next 10 minutes just to uh, play by play these folks balancing the hill here behind number 18. Oh, man. I mean, Brent, do you think – do we have, like, a liability on our hands here? With I don't want to, like, get anybody in trouble here. But with this incline, and we saw it happen to Aaron Rodgers, it didn't take much. Is this a lawsuit waiting to happen? <laughs> I don't think so. It's at your own risk. Uh, but maybe these guys should have golf spikes on or something instead of their uh, tennis shoes or Hey Dudes okay. or Skechers. Hey, hey. Oh, what, what a plug for Hey Dudes. Hey, if you're going to blow out your Achilles, do it in a pair of Hey Dudes. Hey, Casey, do we uh, do we go to Sawgrass later today and maybe, you know, kind of roll down a hill a little bit, maybe fake an injury and uh, get a little lawsuit? What are you thinking? He's in. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, We're in. I bet he would be in. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't count on it. I don't think you're going to hey, win. They got pretty it's good not like we signed any kind here. of waiver or anything. We didn't sign a waiver. <laughs> I just think that's burning the quads for people right now, trying to hit the uh, the low gear going down that for hill sure. on those legs. And by the uh, way, that, that, that kid the, rocking uh, that sweater, come golf? on, man. It's way too warm. I mean, where is everyone? We're going to get a golf shot here or what? Tied up on 17, I guess. I guess so. Lovely yeah. day though All at right. Sawgrass. Uh, we'll talk some. We'll talk some more football. How about that? Until uh, until we get somebody biting it down that hill. Brent Morton, Austin Lane. Uh, okay, <laughs> so we see what happened. We know what happened. Uh, what does it mean for the draft? Did anything change? Other uh, the biggest thing that changed for the draft for the Jags is they're not taking center, right? I mean, we know they're not taking center. Uh, of all the positions of need, we're thinking wide receiver, center. Uh, interior line in general, defensive interior line, and cornerback. I would say those are kind of the positions. Mm -hmm. They're definitely not taking center anymore now that they signed Mitch Morse. They do still have Luke Fortner. Did it eliminate anybody else, any of the moves of the last couple of days? I mean, I think it it amplified the fact of I was very adamant in the first round it's got to be a corner before free agency, right? Like you you had a glaring hole there. Um, Darius Williams was gone. So that had to be addressed. Well, you've addressed it a little bit now. You bring in Savage. You bring in Darby. So I don't necessarily think that corner is the most pressing need now in the first round. I think you can make an argument for wide receiver, obviously. You can make an argument for interior defensive line. So there's a few ways you could go as to opposed to before this whole thing started where it's like, all right, the Jaguars are getting a corner um, at pick 17. Yeah, I think I really believe now, like they're not taking obviously center. I th- I never thought they were all in on corner at at number seventeen. I get why people think they might have done that or they could do that. I understand they could have certainly taken corner at seventeen. I just wasn't as committed to it as everybody else was coming out of the combine. Like, oh, they're taking corner at seventeen. I was like, I don't really get that uh, line of thought to be that adamant about it. Certainly, it's still in play. Uh, The defensive tackle position, to me, is clear that they are going to draft early a defensive tackle. They have to get younger. They do have to get better, but they have to get younger and cheaper at that spot. They're already invested, and they're not going after any of the guys that got picked up, like the Christian Wilkins of the world. They just were not going to spend to that degree here in free agency. So they're definitely going to try to get younger in that position. Now, there's another way to go here is pass rusher. They haven't done anything at pass rush right now, Austin. I think pass rush becomes clearer a, a priority if they don't sign anybody in free agency. They have absolutely no depth behind Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker. Yeah, and you know, and once again, being tied to names like Brian, well, thank God they ain't paid Brian Burns now. Could you imagine bringing Brian Burns in with that price tag and then Josh Allen just chilling <laughs> on a franchise tag? Yeah. What would that have been like? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, um, that wouldn't have been, nevertheless, wouldn't have been though, comfortable. No, not at all. But nevertheless, yeah, I mean, you can still address um, the edge as well. You know, they were they were linked to Brian Burns. They were linked to Daniel Hunter. One would assume that maybe the plan was to move Trayvon Walker inside then. The way I see it right now, Brenton, once again, depending on what the scheme is going to look like, depending if you move people around, you have two verified bookends. If you want to sign another guy, then so be it. If you want to draft another guy, then so be it. It's a, it's a need, but I feel like interior is the more pressing need right now. That's interesting because, you know, with all the Hunter talk and the Brian Burns, you know, that could be the next team. Now, Danell Hunter, by the way, is still out there. 
So unless there's something that happened in the last hour that I haven't seen. But he's still out there. He might be the most coveted guy still available, actually, uh, that hasn't linked up with the team yet. So unless they make a move like that, you know, at least in the conversation that they were thinking about making moves like that from reports, that indicated to me that they were willing to move Trayvon Walker around. And I know Austin didn't like that, but it doesn't matter if you like it or not. They might have been willing to do that. So now they really have no depth at the pass rusher position. If they want to use Trayvon Walker in a versatile role, they absolutely need to find some players in that pass rush uh, maybe early, like in first round, in the 17th overall pick. So like, I think that jumps to a high priority spot. I think you can take defensive tackle in that first round, but I think you can also do that in the second round or third round and still find a quality player. You run the risk of doing that more with pass rusher. Usually those guys are in that top 20 picks where you really want to find somebody that's going to make an impact right away. And then the other position that, that I'm keeping my eye on is receiver. Because if they don't bring Ridley back, Austin, I think receiver becomes a high priority in the first two rounds of this draft for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think what they've shown here is they want to continue to add for Trevor Lawrence. I think the idea that they go get Gabe Davis, that they already have Zay Jones and Kirk, and that they still want Ridley back, according to reports, indicates to me that they want to load up in that spot for Trevor Lawrence. If they can't bring Ridley back, the way to load up is to go get one of these young guys in the draft and probably early in the draft in the first or second round. Yeah, and that's exactly right. You know, I mean, one of two things is either going to shake out here. Either Calvin Ridley signs back on the Jaguars, fantastic. You keep your second-round pick, party in the streets, your, your wide receiver core is set. Fine. Perfect. If you don't get Calvin Ridley, if he goes someplace else, whatever takes more money, whatever the case may be, then yeah, then you're looking for your number one receiver. And guess what? Unless it's T. Higgins, you can't find it in free agency, so you got to find it in the draft. And if you want to find that one receiver in the draft, that wide receiver one, you probably got to take him in the first round. Maybe something drops you in the second round, but once again, how confident are you with that then? So to me, the big challenge right now is bringing back Calvin Ridley, getting him on the books, shoring up your wide receiver core, and then it allows you as a team to be like, okay, you know, let's take the best possible guy, whether it's the edge or interior defense in the first round, second round, more of the same, maybe, you know, a cornerback, whatever your case you want to say, but let's work from there and then, you know, kind of go about our way. So Kelvin Ridley is a huge domino right now in terms of what this draft's going to shake out to and also what this wide receiver room is going to look like as well. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, man. I think uh, I, I think the Ridley move here, whatever happens, is massive from a domino effect. I mean, think about it alone. They, they wanted to get a guy back. They're able to get a guy. Let's just assume he comes back. They want to get him. They got him. They don't have to give up the second-round pick. They pull the rabbit out of their hat. I mean, they really do if they were able to get him tomorrow and Ridley's back on this roster. The other part of that domino effect is, okay, now in the draft, you don't have to worry about it super early, but you might still go get it because Ridley's going to be 30 years old. And my guess is the other domino part of this is, well, you, you might get rid of Zay Jones, so you'll still need some depth. So it, it's fascinating. Now, if they keep Zay Jones, I would say receiver becomes far less important, but you have to start looking ahead and getting some of these younger receivers in because Zay's not going to be here forever. Christian Kirk's money continues to get more and more. Uh, Ridley, even if you do bring him back, how long is he here? The Jags do have to look down the line a little bit for their quarterback, and they do need cheaper options at receiver sooner or later if they're going to extend Trevor Lawrence. So it's, a, it's just a fascinating domino right now that Ridley, who I thought by yesterday was out of play really for the Jags overall, but here we are 24 hours later, and it seems like at least he's still in the mix to affect all these other decisions for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And if that is the case, if they don't bring Ridley back, well then receiver, I think, becomes certainly high priority. And then like I just mentioned, pass rusher now, if they're not going to get a Denell Hunter, they're not doing much on the defensive front. They need defensive tackle help. They need depth for a pass rush, I mean, 17, 48, like these are picks that become very valuable to try to get these kind of guys. So, um, yeah, the next 24 hours is still really interesting to see, not just from a Ridley standpoint, but uh, what the Jags do to kind of help get some depth pass rush with my guest, Caleb on Chase on gone and Smoot likely gone as well here in Jacksonville. I mean, there's there's nobody right now behind this tandem that you can rely on in Jacksonville to help rush the passer, Austin. 
No, without a doubt. And once again, when it comes to rushing the passer, you do need depth. The more you have, the merrier. It, it, it all comes down to Ridley. What about, I mean, uh, I know it's kind of a, a forgotten thing, but it's probably the most cursed position the Jaguars have had the past decade here. In terms of kicker, what do you do now? Well, you can hear me, but I can't hear you right now, so I know you just posed the question oh. back to me. So <laughs> I, I can't hear you at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to oh, keep, uh, okay. keep talking, uh, if I will, just for another second. I'll wrap it up, and I'll get us to a commercial break so I can fix that part of it uh, in, in just a moment. Um, one other thing about this that I do want to get to, and, and we'll get to it in just a minute after the commercial break, is did the Jags do enough – to band-aid up some of their holes. And also, last year, one of the big criticisms was running it back. Well, with all these moves that they just made, it certainly indicates the Jaguars aren't going to just run it back uh, once again the way it was. This team is going to look a lot different uh, in a lot of respects, special teams-wise, offensively, and defensively, but maybe defensively and special teams-wise uh, the most. Uh, it is time for a timeout anyway here from the Players' Championship, TPC Sawgrass. Let's take a break. We come back. We keep talking about the Jags, and there's a lot of other stuff going around the National Football League. What is the impact on the Jaguars? Because I think something happened yesterday that actually – benefited the Jaguars more than any move they made here in Jacksonville. A live look at uh, TPC Sawgrass in the 17th hole here on a Tuesday at the Players' Championship. I like to say everybody has a story, and sometimes we're a part of other people's stories. That's the case here at Nimnick Buick GMC my family, and the Nimdick family. We've purchased six different vehicles from Nimdick Buick GMC. Maybe you're in the market for a truck. Well, let me tell you about the GMC Sierra. I absolutely love mine. I've had a couple of these. This one's a 2020, but right now on 2024, GMC Sierra's here at Nimdick Buick GMC. There's special financing. A year ago, we purchased a GMC Terrain for the kids. Financing rates as low as 2.9% right now for eligible buyers on Terrains and Acadias 2. Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. Nimnik Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom. Meet the fantastic people. Or shop online at NimnikBuickGMC.com. Nimnik, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. The friendliest golf course in town, the Golf Club at Southampton. Local golfers have no shortage of options when it comes to picking a course to play here in Northeast Florida year round. Yet time and time again, I find myself here at the Golf Club at Southampton. Easy to get to off 210 in St. Johns County. It's family owned and operated and renowned for being one of the area's most player friendly. That's just one of the reasons we hold the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18 charity golf tournament here each fall. The Mark McCumber design layout is great for all skill levels of golfers, from the guys who bomb it a mile on the range to golfers like me who are just happy to put it in the fairway, which Southampton has very accommodating fairways. And if you need new clubs, come down to the Pro Shop. They'll fit you up and get you a nice new set, like they did for me. For more information on membership or to book a tee time and see for yourself, head over to GolfSouthampton.com or call the clubhouse at 904-287-7529. The Golf Club at Southampton. It's the official home of the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18. Make it your home for golf, too. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who's coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. 
Thank you for making Action News Jacks the best in Jacks and Folio's Best of Jacks 2023. Best TV station, best TV newscast, best TV morning show. Chandler Morgan voted best TV anchor. The Chief, Mike Burrish, voted best meteorologist. And Brent Martineau voted best TV sports anchor. And while you're on the go, best news website and best local blog, The Burrish Blog. Thank you for making Action News Jacks local coverage you can count on. Stop by the new car sales event happening right now at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. $500 in a job gets you in a Kia. And Michael Monsiero and the staff here at Greenway Kia are here to make it happen. Experience great customer service and become a part of their family. And while you're here, check out the Kia Forte GT line. Full of comfort, innovation, and has driver assist technology. And how about the affordable new Kia EV9, the fast charging, all new electrical SUV with high performance capability. Three row seats with 304 miles of maximum driving range. Over 1,000 new Kia models, some starting at $199 a month. And as always, get the 10 year, 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty. Come shop at Greenway Kia at the Avenues, located on Phillips Highway. You can shop online at GreenwayKiaAtTheAvenues.com. And remember, $500 and a job gets you in a Kia at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around the clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. All right, there's a look at TPC Sawgrass once again. The 17th hole, we're giving you a bunch of different angles. That's a, that's a file look at it. That's not a live look at it. Uh, that will be the place to be. 16, 17, 18 should be a lot of fun uh, coming up uh, all weekend. We're live at the Players' Championship, TPC Sawgrass 2024. And uh, obviously, golf the backdrop, talking a lot of football here on the show. Brent Martineau, Austin Lane. I can hear you again now, uh, Austin. Hopefully you can hear me. And uh, sorry, before the break, I know you were... You, it seemed like you threw something back to me of a, an idea, uh, but I did not uh, hear that. So if you wanted to bring up that thought again, feel free. Oh, yeah, man. Let me go and recycle that thought real quick. No, I was just talking about the, the, the kicking situation now. I mean, the kicking situation in Jacksonville the past, oh, I don't know, a decade, it seems like, um, has been an issue. And you thought you had it shored up. We got left at the altar. That's okay. Got cold feet. It happens to all of us. Do you address it in free agency? You look in the draft. I mean, I know it's not like that pressing of a need right now. We have time. But what do you think the Jaguars do now going forward? I think there will be plenty of kickers to get. Uh, but it is kind of interesting. They lost the guy they coveted. Um, McManus seemed to fall out of favor in Jacksonville. He ends up signing uh, with the Washington Commanders uh, and had a good year until the bad stretch where he missed like five out of six. So, yeah, I don't feel like I'm in panic mode about the Jaguars kicking situation. But it has been a bit of a mystery at times over the last few years, ever since Josh Lambeau left. And they haven't quite fixed it. They've remedied it, but I'm not really sure they've fixed it. Uh, so I, I agree with you. I actually think it's kind of one of those weird deals because there's so many other things that take priority. But if you think about it, I think the Jags are... Uh, the confidence level in their kicking game from a field goal standpoint, obviously they love Logan Cook, but from a field goal standpoint is uh, is not really high and probably needs to be fixed. And I don't know who they get. There will be plenty of guys to try to get, but I just don't know if, even if it's a name, even if it's someone with experience, is that guy going to be able to get the job done to the degree they need to get the job done? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like we're talking about, there's no rush in terms of the kicking situation, you can only have one of them. But at the end of the day, I would like to have a guy where it's just, okay, we can finally wash our hands of this, and he's dependable, we like it, and we can finally move on. Look at this. You don't even have to come out to the Players' Championship right now. We'll give you a little look at the practice uh, with Liv Tassley at 18. We finally got a tee shot. Forget about guys breaking ankles down the hill. These guys are on flat ground, Austin. Good looking Ooh. swing right there. Okay, I think he likes it. I can't it. tell who it is. Of course um, he likes it. It's a practice round. It's not to like. 
Sure. There we go. White um, on white with the right. white hat too. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> you're going. You're going fashion. Hey, is, uh, you're is that guy uh, five two? Who is that guy? He's like five two. Is that Ricky? <laughs> no. Who is? That? Uh, I don't know who that is. I'm trying to see. I don't know. My screen's not big enough with these old eyes to see uh, exactly who it is. Um, but I'm sure you guys can see that guy, as I you're mean, watching it, hopefully on a big screen. Guy could be pushing five seven five eight right now. I mean, he's not even a point guard of YMCA, I don't think, bro. That guy's too, okay, whatever, man. <laughs> Do your thing. Uh, that guy's wearing a beanie, yeah, but that can, makes zero. Can, why is there a guy wearing a beanie? A, what was, yeah, was going on? Give, give me a soft. <laughs> So soft at the, at the sawgrass, man. We're in a beanie. Like, like we're in Colorado, like a hipster. Uh, hey, you can uh, probably make out on your big screen TV. Maybe it's at work on your big monitor. Uh, checking out the show, Action Sports Shacks 24-7 Network. But you can also watch in your living room. Uh, you can watch on Roku and Apple TV and Google TV and all the rest. Just download the Action News Jacks Now app and uh, wherever you stream. And you can uh, see us there on the big 60-inch, 70-inch, 80-inch TV. I don't know if you really want to do that, but uh, we'd love for you to do that. Check it out on actionnewsjacks.com for more details. And, of course, the Action News Jacks app on your phone or wherever you uh, download your apps. Brett Martin, Austin Lane, Brett and Austin Show. Before we uh, took a break, I mentioned the Jags uh, are not going to run it back this year, Austin. You mentioned they might, they're going to have a new kicker. Well, offensively, they're going to have another wide receiver in Gabe Davis. They're going to have a new center. They do have a lot of familiar faces on offense. We'll obviously see what the draft brings, too. We'll find out if Ridley comes back. Defensively, they've got a new defensive coordinator. They've got a lot of new faces on defense now, what they just did in the secondary, and more to come and what does that tell you does that tell you that they just couldn't run it back or were they not satisfied with what they did bring back in 2023 yeah i just think that they weren't satisfied of what they brought back and they're just trying to get better uh brent we have a little break i don't want to say breaking news but we have a little movement in the afc south if you're interested real quick i am interested so the Texans have landed a running back. Obviously, it's not Saquon Barkley, but uh, Ian Rappaport, let me make sure he's legit before I click. Yep, 4.4 million followers. Ian, we used to be friends, man. You got too big for me. Uh, plot twist, the Bengals are now trading Joe Mixon to the Texans rather than releasing him, sources say. So Zach Moss signs in Cincy. Mixon is traded to Houston from Joe Burrow to C.J. Stroud. Well, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. You know, this is actually a perfect segue into what I want to get to. But first, let's react to the Mixon part of this. Mixon's a good football player still. I think he's getting a little longer in the tooth. Uh, I'd much rather, I think, Houston end up with a guy like Mixon than a Saquon Barkley or, you know, somebody like that. But I think it's still a pretty good move uh, at a moderate level uh, to get a running back and they needed one now remember Antonio Pierce uh Antonio Pierce Damian Pierce uh had a good year two years ago it was Singletary who was the guy last year he gets traded to the Giants and now that Joe Mixon comes down from the Bengals what's your reaction to Mixon how much does he have left how much can he impact that football team yeah how much does he have left could be a little bit of a question you know you lose Singletary obviously that was a big loss for them he was really their guy and he used to even though Damian Pierce I thought was going to be the guy ends up faltering a little bit it is what it is but I think with Mixon you get a little more in the the receiving game as well and that's what was kind of missing last year I feel like from Houston I mean they were a complete offense an explosive offense but did you really trust their running backs in terms of the receiving game and I think Mixon now can come in with CJ Stroud kind of be that safety blanket you know that check down if you will and also can give you something between the tackles so I think it's a good signing by the Houston Texans he doesn't scare me as much as obviously like a Saquon Barkley would, but you know, when he's healthy, still a hell of a player. All right, here's the deal, Austin. I thought this was the biggest thing that transpired actually in the last 24 hours for the Jacksonville Jaguars from a fan base standpoint, maybe for their organization standpoint. As you look at this thing on Sunday evening, let's say, before legal tampering starts, before the new league year is about to hit, before free agency really winds up, and you look at the Houston Texans in the AFC South, they become the team to beat. They've got C.J. Stroud. They've got talented young players. They've got a lot of money. They've got a good coach in D'Amico Ryans. They've won the AFC South. They've won a playoff game. They are the team that now will 
everybody will be chasing in the AFC South. Now, they're going to have to do it with a first-place schedule. There's all that. We've had some of the conversation. But they were a dangerous team to me from at least an optic point of view and maybe just from a roster build point of view coming up in the last couple of days. Well, they did not get Saquon Barkley. They did not get Christian Wilkins. They made some moderate-level deals. They didn't go splash crazy with some of these big-name guys. They did just pick up Joe Mixon. But I thought they might be way more active and go for the throat, and it would feel like, oh, my goodness, that would really threaten you just from a field standpoint in the AFC South and maybe even the entire AFC. For some reason, Nick Casario, D'Amico Ryans, and the Houston Texans chose not to do that. They actually lost Blake Cashman, who played very well at the linebacker position for them last year. He moves on, and they did replace the linebacker position yesterday, uh, later in the day, I think, uh, as well. But... Were you surprised that Houston didn't do more, didn't make a bigger splash, didn't say, hey, look what we got, we're going for it right now, we got a ton of momentum. They kind of laid back in the weeds a bit more than expected yesterday. I was a little surprised by it. You know, sometimes we see teams do this, and it seems like an AFC South thing more than anything because we've seen the Colts have done this in the past, um, and, and, and now the Texans have done this as well. You know, I think you like your core. You like who you have at your pillars. I feel like they're maybe one or two like elite players away from making that Super Bowl run. They must like who they have. Like Mixon, you know, overall, like the guy was going to get released, right? And obviously you make a play for him at the last second. He makes you a little more dynamic. I get that. On defense, what have you really done? I mean, they like their team. I think another year of C.J. Stroud. I think another year of those young players, and they're thinking, you know what? We're going to be right up there with the elites, with the Buffalo Bills, with the Kansas City Chiefs. So I think it's more of them relying more on their coaching and player development than actually going to chase those big names in free agency. Yeah, I I get, and and I'm not telling you that's the wrong way to go, right? I mean, sometimes it's the right way to go. Uh, But they actually approached free agency, Austin, many ways like the Jags did, but they were in a totally different situation. The Jags didn't have near as much money to play with. Uh, and, and Houston, remember now, like we talked about yesterday, they've got like this young nucleus that that's actually the, the, the starting point of their build. The Jags had a young nucleus, but they really spent a ton of money in 2022 in free agency to kind of get on the board, advance their roster build. The Houston Texans didn't do that and still were able to have big time performance last year and surprise everybody. So it, it does surprise me that they went a more moderate route, I guess is what I would say, almost like they were somewhat against the cap, not against it completely. But again, I just equate them to the Jags. These are moves that were like, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Not let's like, boom, let's go get the guy and, and pay him you know, more than anybody else is paying. So that mentality did surprise me. I'm not telling you it's wrong. Sometimes that really works. If you look at the good football teams over the years, I think a lot of them don't spend in free agency. So uh, maybe that is actually a good thing for Houston, Austin. And you know what? I thought about this yesterday. It might actually be a good thing for the Jags. Does it tell us something where these rosters are, especially here in Jacksonville? And it also tells you something about the cap, that they didn't have to go crazy spending spree to enhance their roster. Instead, they could be a little bit more judicious about how they spent their money because in a lot of spots, they're in pretty good shape. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing with Houston. They're in pretty good shape, and they're still pretty good young at, you know, some meaningful spots. So I think they're going to kind of, you know, pin their ears back a little bit, wait and see what happens. I mean, not to say, listen, if you have a major injury, can you trade later on or get somebody later on? Sure, that's fine. But as it looks right now, I mean, Houston's roster, you got to like what you see. And unfortunately, if you're a Jaguars fan, you don't like what you see, but – it's all going to come down to C.J. Stroud at the end of the day, right? They're only going to be as good as C.J. Stroud will allow them to be, just like I feel like this team can only be as good as Trevor Lawrence will allow the Jaguars to be. And assuming that C.J. Stroud takes that next step, right, making your most um, progress from year one to year two, I think they're putting a lot of their eggs in the C.J. Stroud basket as they should. I think he can, you know, maybe will them to some playoff wins. Now, do I want to see it? Absolutely not. It's the Houston Texans can't stand them. But I'm also, you know, not naive to the fact of C.J. Stroud and that Houston team is a pretty damn good team. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's it's interesting to take that kind of uh, thirty thousand foot view on this, and, and you know, you're you're right. We can all see that. Like Houston looks like they're going to be around. I'm not predicting that all of a sudden they're going to go backwards. I just think they really could have um, 
thrown the fear factor in everybody in the AFC South because I mean, you tell me that you've got those guys that they obviously did well uh, with already on their roster. They lose some of the veteran players. They get a little bit younger, and then they go spend and get the Saquon Barkleys and Christian Wilkins, and now I'm like, whoa, like that would have been something. And it just, they didn't do that. And then the flip side of it is the Jags, like they seem like they did more than I thought they would do. So the draft and free agency, how you feel right now compared to how it actually works out, I get it. It's two different animals. But I actually feel pretty good about where the Jags are going into 2020 for going into the draft part of this offseason based on what not just the Jags did, but what Houston didn't do. Whether that's right or wrong, that's just the way I feel about it right now, and I wonder if more fans feel that way uh, here in Jacksonville too. And if you look at the rest of the AFC South, I mean, the Titans are in a totally different spot, but it's not like Indianapolis is doing anything crazy, although there is some talk. Did you see some talk out of Indianapolis that Justin Fields could be a landing spot to be a backup quarterback there? Um, I did not see that. That would be a little shocking to me, I would feel like, because I still feel like he's a, he has the ability to start in the NFL, you know, now where that's going to be. I mean, you could have said Washington, but not Washington, I feel like, is kind of showing up their quarterback room, so... I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense in Indy if he was willing to be a backup just because you're going to run essentially the same stuff with Richardson and him. So in terms of, you know, the playbook, it'll be the same for both quarterbacks, which is nice. So I, I guess I could see that. Yeah, I, I don't know uh, if I, – I think there are just a lot of rumors going on right now about – Justin Fields because it doesn't look like there's a landing spot. Apparently, a lot of reports say the market is a lot less um, robust for him. It's very thin in terms of uh, how many people want him. And so it's an interesting case to watch. Uh, the other interesting news to me on Monday that I thought was kind of a cool story, really, and what tells you a little bit about the NFL and how this can really work. I think so many people get... I don't know about turned off, but they get numb to the numbers and how much these guys are making, especially these big dollar deals during this first wave. But how about the story of Gardner Minshew and the Raiders going to get Gardner Minshew? They're going to give him $15 million guaranteed, $25 million contract over two years, Austin. I love the story. It's a six-round pick. Guy's probably making hardly nothing relative to the rest of everybody in the National Football League. He goes to Philly, plays out that, gets a pro – I think it was like very – moderate $3 million deal type of thing with Indianapolis. And now he parlays all that into a two-year $25 million deal and might be the guy, at least for now, in Las Vegas. I think it's a great fit for whatever reason. I have Gardner Minshew being a great fit for the Raiders organization. Cool story, though, for Gardner Minshew. It's the one that caught my attention yesterday. Yeah, it's a great story, man. I mean, guy's been kind of the underdog uh, his entire career, you know, and he did his thing in Jacksonville. Goes on to Philly, is the backup there. He gets a couple games where he gets to play. Goes to Indianapolis, does his thing a little bit. Like, couldn't be happier for Gardner Minshew. You know, I wish him nothing but the best, obviously. One of the coolest people I ever got to interview at the Senior Bowl. And, yeah, there's just something just about Las Vegas and Gardner <laughs> Minshew that I feel like just goes together. You know, just, <laughs> Doesn't just it? big, big living, you know, just big personality. And, um, yeah, I'm sure Minshew is going to fit right in there. Uh, in Vegas. Is he the guy, though, there, do you think? I mean, are they going to do something else, or does this indicate now they'll draft a quarterback and Gardner can be their stopgap, and I maybe mean, they I, hope he holds off whoever else? Yeah, I think the, with what you're paying him, I mean, you expect him to be the guy to, at least for a little bit, um, but I could definitely see them drafting a quarterback, obviously, maybe developing, sit behind Gardner Minshew a little bit, learning, and then eventually that rookie quarterback being the predecessor – but I think Minshew comes in right now as being the favorite to start week one for the Raiders. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting. We talked about this briefly yesterday, maybe last week, can't remember. But the Baker Mayfield story, right, the Baker Mayfield contract, I think it sheds new light, at least for the time being, on maybe how teams will potentially look at the stopgap between getting your next franchise quarterback and and giving the guy that used to be a franchise quarterback another opportunity to do so. And here's what I mean by it. Minshew is one of those. I mean, Minshew's not really ever been like the, the top 10 pick, the first round pick, but he had a chance here in Jacksonville, the year they went 1-15, to take the reins and show his stuff. Didn't work out. He had another chance last year to show his stuff 
it did work out in Indianapolis in a far better situation for him and everyone else. Now it looks like he might get a chance in Las Vegas. The other guy here is Sam Darnold. Darnold, who's bounced around, most recently with the San Francisco 49ers, they gave him a $10 million deal in Minnesota, Austin, to say, hey, if we can't find our guy, we're going to try you out as our guy instead of Kirk Cousins since he's now in Atlanta. Interesting situation for a $10 million deal up in Minnesota. Justin Jefferson swinging at air right now, swinging, punching anything he can get his, his hands on, wants out, throwing a tantrum, grittying to his lawyer immediately saying, get me out of here, going to his agent, grittying outside of Minnesota, I want to go someplace else. Yeah, and sorry, Casey, I think I know Sam Donald's your dude and everything. Um, we'll see what happens. One would think it's got to be just a temporary fix until they draft somebody because if you're going to base your entire franchise and the the overall well-being of Justin Jefferson on a Sam Darnold, Minnesota, you might want to check yourselves. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do. There's a couple other uh, quarterback names out there. Mariota uh, is going to end up in Washington, it sounds like, and Jameis Winston is uh, getting close to a deal to back up Deshaun Watson in Cleveland. So, I mean, those are former first and second round picks still bouncing around in backup spots and in spots again. In this day and age in the NFL, where you're likely going to get an opportunity. There are 70 quarterbacks that played, I think, last year, started the game, uh, and either started or played. And the same deal the year prior, I think the number was 68. So, I mean, that's the nature of the business right now. That's the nature of the game. It's a violent game. It's a longer season, and you better be pretty good in the backup spot. But the flip side of that is, from an individual perspective, these guys are getting more and more opportunities to get in there. I mean, a lot of times you'd be a backup quarterback. You wouldn't play for five years. That's not the case yeah. anymore. I think you're getting to play a game or two or maybe four and show your stuff a little bit. And in some cases, like Gardner Minshew, playing a lot longer or Baker Mayfield getting another chance. We'll see if a guy like Winston. I think he's intriguing, Austin. Like, does Winston – get a chance. If Deshaun Watson gets hurt early and they've got some talent in Cleveland, could Winston, after sitting for a bit, be a guy that emerges like a Baker Mayfield? To me, he would be a candidate for that. Yeah, I mean, how could he not? You know, you saw what a Joe Flacco did coming off the couch and willing that team uh, to a little bit of a playoff run. So, Jameis Winston theoretically could probably do the exact same thing. So, yeah, it'll be all eyes on Deshaun Watson. And, man, you want to talk about that investment of what they gave to get him, how much they paid to get Deshaun Watson? I don't think anybody has more pressure on them this year to perform than Deshaun Watson does. Yeah, I would think you're probably right, although maybe a, a next guy that I was going to talk about a little bit has a bunch of pressure too, and that's Kirk Cousins. I was thinking of it in the nature of this. Cousins, who I think was, I don't know about, uh, what do you say his perception was when he was coming out of Washington – uh, and to Minnesota early on, uh, would you? I don't want to say vilified. I just think it has like a. It had a negative tone when you would say Kirk Cousins' name. Would you agree? Um, I don't, I don't know if I'd say negative tone per se. I mean, I know like the whole you like that thing and maybe like rub some people the wrong way. I, I just think like it was more of an adequate title coming from Washington to Minnesota. Like I didn't perceive Kirk Cousins to put up the numbers that he did when he left Washington. All right, so this is where I'm going with it. Has anyone done more for himself from an image standpoint, a dollar standpoint, a maybe even a legacy standpoint, um, a current place in the game at the quarterback position standpoint than Kirk Cousins in the last couple of years? I mean, if you take the QB series on Netflix, the documentary stuff, I, people fell in love with Kirk Cousins from an image standpoint. If you look at what he's done and what his value was in Minnesota and now his value to go to Atlanta, end up in that landing spot, the amount of money this guy has made now in his career, which I think is like $338 million guaranteed or something like that. I, I mean, what a it's it's pretty amazing kind of the character arc, if you will, of, uh, of Kirk Cousins in the National Football League. Yeah, to me, he's kind of always been a little bit of the of the unknown, you know, like not necessarily talked about in the elite conversation, but then you see his number and it's just like, well, man, this guy might be elite. So he's kind of always just minded his time. I mean, the biggest knock against Kirk Cousins is the fact of can he win the big ones, right? Can he win the primetime games and can he win the big ones? 
I didn't watch the the whole Netflix thing, so I could care less in terms of like how he comes across, you know. But I think overall, as a quarterback, I think people respect him, and I think that he can get his yards now. You know, I mean, am I ready to call him a, a top five quarterback? Absolutely not. Jason Hamby, if you're listening, put your earmuffs on. Sorry. But I just think that this guy right now, I mean, he's had some good teams to play on. He's had a lot of weapons. He's going to Atlanta where he'll, you know, he'll have some more weapons in his own right. You know, he'll have B. John Robinson helping him out a little bit. He'll have Drake London. And God help me. Because I'm getting ready to sit here, you know, on a on a Tuesday, three twelve to twenty four, saying I'm probably going to draft Kyle Pitts in my fantasy team for the fourth year in a row. <laughs> I have an addiction. I need help. I need an intervention. But hey, it makes a lot of sense with Kirk Cousins. This is what I'm telling myself this year. It's like, all right, well, I mean, you know, Kyle Pitts, Arthur Smith didn't use him right. This has to be Kyle Pitts' year, right? So I'm going to draft him again, and I'll probably get burned again because it happens every single year. Last year it was. Well, I mean, Arthur Smith's got to use Kyle Pitts this year. Jonu Smith, I mean, as a backup, I'm not buying into Jonu Smith. Six touchdowns later for Jonu Smith and, and Kyle Pitts riding the pine a little bit. And I'm sorry, Brent, it's a little bit my rant right here. I'm just saying I need Kyle Pitts to have a big year because I'll probably draft him again in fantasy football. I actually did see something in the last day. It was like a tweet, and it said uh, tight end, and I forget who they were t- – I think it was before they got to uh, Hawkinson. So whoever was before Hawkinson with Cousins had like 980 yards. And then Hawkinson had 960 yards or 980 or something. And so they said, hey, Kyle Pitts, you know, one thing about Kirk Cousins, he's been able to make those uh, tight ends better. So maybe maybe you should draft him, Austin. Bounce back here for Pitts, who actually might have to change his number because both could be battling for the number eight in Atlanta. That's a good point. I mean, can you go like eight and zero eight? Is that possible or not? Um <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to dr- said he I'm might go back to 84 <laughs> his college oh. days. Oh, that's I got you. I mean, that's okay, but yeah, 8 looked good on him, man. He just he look he's an athlete, you know what I'm saying? And the mental gymnastics, the therapy that I had to go through last year with Kyle Pitts on my team and Arthur Smith criminally not using him as how he should have used him. Um, it still affects me, Brent, but yeah, one would think you get Kirk Cousins now, a reliable quarterback, a quarterback who loves to use the tight end. You think the, the the stock for Kyle Pitts is big right now, but I'm sure they'll find an excuse not to get him the ball as usual. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Uh, hey, there is a, a, a just a note a tweet. I mean, how true it is, who knows? But it's a report uh, in the last hour that uh, Gabe Davis had a similar offer from uh, Chicago, uh, but went with the Jaguars. Uh, the Bills uh, didn't make a competitive offer, according to uh, Henry McKenna. Uh, Davis wanted to go back to the state of Florida. He can work with former Bills wide receivers coach Chad Hall and obviously uh, quarterback Trevor Lawrence. So a little insight on why uh, Gabe Davis chose to go to the Jacksonville Jaguars over uh, a team like the Chicago Bears. All right, let's take a break here as uh, we head to another timeout here at the Players' Championship. TPC Sawgrass, a place to be this week. Uh, the Brenton Austin Show, the place to be all the time from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. We'll take you up until the 1 o'clock hour as we uh, continue to monitor free agency. It's a little bit quiet right now, a little lull in the action, not a lot of moving parts. Everybody awaits Calvin Ridley. I think that's the biggest curiosity going on here in Jacksonville, but even around the National Football League. Uh, We will uh, be right back from TPC Sawgrass and the Players' Championship here on the Brenton Austin Show. Shout out to everybody uh, fishing in the Wahoo Shootout. They have had some unbelievable catches, over 100 pounds, three, four different times. See this tweet or Facebook post? They're starting to get... Reviews from around the world that's starting to catch everybody's attention because the Wahoo are so big here in the Jacksonville area. The Northeast Florida Wahoo shootout continues until the end of the month. And by the way, speaking of golf, Cam Smith caught a big one earlier in this tournament. And, uh, well, he's not here at the Players' Championship. He's on that live golf side of things. Alive Credit Union cares about our community. After all, it was founded by people in our community. 70 years ago by a group of Florida Blue employees. And the mission still is to inspire financial wellness and give you a financially fit lifestyle. In here, they are more than just a bank. You can find Alive in the community providing financial education to our youth, sharing programs that are geared toward building credit and rebuilding credit, and supporting causes with amazing organizations like the American Lung Association. 
This March, Alive Credit Union will be back for the sixth time as a longtime sponsor of the American Lung Association's Fight for Air Climb. The event is March 23rd downtown. Get your team of climbers, family, friends, co-workers. The event will be emceed by Action News Jax's Garrett Biedenbaugh. Be a part of our community and become a member of a live credit union today. Find out the many ways you can be inspired in financial wellness at alivecu.coop. Navigating to that perfect car can be a daunting task. Trust me, I understand. But if you want to find the perfect blend of sales and service for your automotive needs, look no further than the Tom Bush family of dealerships. Here at Tom Bush, they do things right. Dating back to 1970, they've been a staple in the community giving back and keeping everything local. With four different brands to choose from, BMW, Mazda, Volkswagen, and Mini, there's a car for every member of the family and the customer service is second to none. Looking to add an electric vehicle to your fleet, Tom Bush remains at the forefront of new technology with plenty of staff on hand to walk you through the future of driving and help eligible customers file for that EV tax credit. Whether you're looking for your future driver's first car or you want to step up the luxury and arrive in style, the Tom Bush Family Dealership is the only stop that you need to make. Stop by the showroom or check out the inventory at TomBush.com. Go where all the pros go. Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute takes care of athletes at the highest level, like the Jacksonville Jaguars players. They will take care of you, too. Our team covers a lot of teams here in Jacksonville. FSCJ, JU, the Axemen, the Jumbo Shrimp, the Sharks, and, of course, the Jacksonville Jaguars. JOI covers all those teams as well. And then there's youth sports. My kids play baseball and softball. And whenever we have an injury question, the first call is to JOI. Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute has been serving Jacksonville for 30 years. And they have over 30 specially trained physicians and assistants at five locations in the area. If your injury is specific to an area of the body, JOI has a specialist. They also are leaders in robotic surgery, joint replacement, and sports medicine. JOI Rehab has 13 locations and 90 therapists to get you better. Comprehensive care with caring physicians and staff at JOI. From youth sports to high school, college, and the pros, Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute. JOI, go where all the pros go. Get outside. Yeah. <laughs> Make friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes! Learn life lessons with the first team. Golf is kind of like life in a way. You can take some stuff you learn on the course and take that and use it in every single day life. Donate to First Tee's Play Day campaign and everybody wins. For every $10 you've donated, you're entered to win a free round with a buddy. At the stadium course, home of the players, with this guy, Len Matisse. Scan the code on your screen or visit actionnewsjacks.com to learn more. I'm Action News Jack's First Alert Meteorologist Garrett Beaton. While the sun is up and it's going to be a beautiful day. Sometimes you just need a day to yourself. And Garrett's First Alert Forecast makes sure you're ready to go out and enjoy. Garrett and the Action News Jack's This Morning team helping you start your morning right. Discover how good your water can be with a new Kinetico softener and drinking water system. Kinetico's twin tank non-electric softeners are the most efficient softeners available, and their drinking water systems remove up to 99% of contaminants. We know that at our home. You can find out as well. Right now, you can save $1,000 or more when you bundle the Kinetico Premier softener with a Kinetico K5 drinking water system. The experts at CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing will test your water for free and determine your water score. Don't know your water score? Well, CGC will find out and recommend the appropriate Kinetico water treatment solutions to improve it. The higher your water score, the better your water. Call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com. That's 904-552-1242, cgcwater.com. Financing options are available with approved credit. CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I'm a proud customer of CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing, an authorized independent Kinetico dealer. Florida license number CFC 143-2579. Welcome back to the Fred and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Another look at that uh, Wahoo shootout and some of the big catches. Again, the big 
winner right now is 119 pounds. Not the winner, but the big uh, catch. But there are several over 100 pounds, which is uh, Monster Wahoo, uh, according to the folks at the Northeast Florida Wahoo Shootout. And uh, that will continue, of course, until uh, March 30th of uh, this month and we'll see if there are some other big catches uh, coming in. Brent Martineau along with Austin Lane, Brent and Austin show here on a Tuesday at the Players Championship as we really just kick off our coverage at uh, TPC Sawgrass and you take a live look inside the media center right now and that's where Jay Monahan is speaking, the commissioner of the PGA Tour uh, wow, what a tumultuous time in golf the last couple of years. Jay uh, had some health issues as well. Uh, heck, if you go all the way back to five years when the pandemic did hit, it's been a wild time in the world of sports just to begin with. And um, now what does the future of golf look like? I'm sure those are some of the questions being asked and answered uh, today at the news conference. We'll have more of that tonight on Action Sports Shacks on CBS 47 and Fox 30. Our uh, Action Sports Shacks at the Players Specials, 1115 on CBS 47 and Fox 30 nightly this week and uh, it is the 50th year of the players so there's a bunch to celebrate as well brent martineau austin lane brent and austin show and uh this will be a brief segment austin uh something we didn't get to yesterday the uh skirmish between uh south carolina uh on the basketball court in lsu two premier programs uh that led to uh i wouldn't say a brawl but mm. a pretty intense battle uh in that game and this is interesting because you don't see it a ton, or we haven't seen it a ton. There are more eyes on women's basketball, especially these programs who are very good, than maybe we've ever seen, but at least seen recently. And then on top of it, we could see these two teams match up uh, for a big-time game later on in the NCAA tournament, and now you almost can't wait if that happens again. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, for, forget about the men's basketball tournament. Forget about, you know, the big story in men's college basketball. Kyle Filipowski rolling his ankle when, the, when they stormed the court. And me trying to defend him saying, like, hey, this guy might be seriously hurt. Is he going to sue the university? Nah, man, Kyle Filipowski's fine, all right? He's out here tripping North Carolina players. He's just all right, okay? So I'm taking my attention more, Brent, towards the women's basketball side. And that's South Carolina and LSU. Sometimes the TV gods... They grace you. Sometimes they allow you to watch the last two minutes of a basketball game. And I found myself Sunday captivated, Brent, by what transpired in the SEC championship game against LSU and South Carolina. Two teams that are highly touted, obviously. Um, I forgot the girl's name from South Carolina, but literally just pushed her, pushed this girl down to the ground. Kim Larkey wasn't having it, saying she shouldn't have went after her girls, things like that. Dawn Staley said, this isn't who we are. Hey, Coaches, I understand, like, trying to have a high standard and everything and come across a certain way. Just let it happen, okay? Because the guys do this all the time, right? And guess what? You have the names now. You have the Angel Reese's, right? You, you have Don Staley is a really popular coach now. You have all the names in women's college basketball. Take one from the boys, you know? If you want to get a little skirmish, get in a skirmish. Talk a little smack. Do your thing because I'll be honest, I'm intrigued now, Brent. I'm on board. I want me some more women's college basketball. Well, I, I think I, I don't want to say this just unequivocally because I believe Tennessee and UConn over the years have been so good and they've brought eyes and attention. We've had good players um, throughout the course of the history of, of NCAA women's basketball that have brought attention to the sport. But you add this into the Reese Clark of last year, which became a little bit of a thing, into Caitlin Clark and what she's done for the women's game in general over the last year or two. I mean, Austin, without just giving way to recency bias, this has to be the best time ever for women's college basketball, right? Or maybe just even women's basketball in general, even if you count WNBA or any yeah. other uh, competitive women's basketball. Again, we've seen a lot of good stuff, a lot of good stories from Pat Summit to Gino Oriama to other big-time programs. Uh, South Carolina has been good for years now. I think the parity in women's basketball is better than it's ever been. But I think sometimes it takes some of these kind of moments, and I'm not endorsing, hey, let's get in a fight every game, but the Clark Reese thing from last year in the NCAA tournament, and then obviously the unicorn Caitlin Clark is and all the history that she is making. I mean, it's going to be the best time ever for women's hoops. 
Yeah, no, without a doubt. I mean, you have the best women's basketball player, one of the best college players of, of any gender of all time in Caitlin Clark right now. You have, I think, one of the best rivalries right now going in South Carolina and LSU. Like, it has everything. It has everything. It's entertaining. It has faces. It has names. It has drama. It's got everything that you want in a sport. So, yeah, I'm going to be keeping my eyes peeled to see exactly if this whole thing shakes out, if LSU can meet South Carolina again and what exactly is going to happen because there's some bad blood for how that ended. You know, South Carolina won pretty handedly. Um, Angel Reese got in a little bit of a, a, of a drawing match with some South Carolina players. So, yeah, there's still some unfinished business. And once again, you have two of, like, um, it's Kim Mulkey, right, who is, like, I don't even know how to – how to sus- describe her like just flashy these loud coats and everything like and it's not necessarily like, like an attention thing she's just like it's her own little personality and then you have Dawn Staley the coach of South Carolina who by the way lost five players last year five starters on her team replaced her five stars with five new starters oh and by the way they're undefeated so she's a pretty good coach just rocking hoodies the entire time and we know, and we know what the hoodie brings to the table. If you're rocking a hoodie as a head coach, you you got some grit. Ask Bill Belichick. Ask Mike Vrabel. Ask <laughs> Don Staley. You, you got some grit to you. And Don Staley, if you watch her team play, man, they're 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 nasty. They're physical, uh, and they have some dogs in them. Yeah, it's pretty. It's it's a, a wild time. It's great for the sport. I think it's really good, and um, it it's, should be a fun tournament. Like you said, I, I'm not sure. Everybody will agree with you. Like, hey, I'm looking forward to the women's basketball tournament more than the men's basketball tournament. But um, well, I, was, I, I, was, I was being sarcastic, Brett. Come on. I, I get it. I get it. I, I, but there's there might be better storylines. Yeah. I mean, Austin, there might be better story. I mean, if you like stories, there. I mean, men's basketball doesn't have Caitlin Clark. I no, mean, they, and and now we got they this. have Kyle. They have Kyle Filipowski getting treated like Kerry Strug winning the Olympics and getting carried off the court because <laughs> they act like he broke his ankle. <laughs> I think he's doing 360 dunks the next game. Give me a break, Kyle Filipowski. That's the last time I ever defended a Duke player again. <laughs> was I was on his side, too. Oh, Gary Shrug. Oh, you like that? <laughs> yeah, Shrug. man. He went, he went Olympic gymnastics to make yeah, the pole. She, she got carried impressive. off. Come on now. <laughs> uh, the chat is saying Dearness Johnson is back with the Jacksville Jaguars. Uh, let's take a look and see if we can find that. Uh, we take a break. Uh, I feel like we're breaking more than uh, more than normal here at the Players Championship. But uh, hey, that's what it is. TPC Sawgrass is going to pay the bills and uh, get you set for the final hour of the show. Take you up until one o'clock. Don't forget, you can find us all over the place. ActionNewsJacks.com, the Action News Jacks app, and uh, if you watch streaming from your living room and uh, any of the Roku, Apple TV, Google TV, the place to find us is uh, just Action News Jacks Now app. So those are all the different ways, and of course, still on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter and Twitch Brenton Austin show back from the Players Championship right after this. In Northeast Florida, we love hanging out on the back patio, maybe grilling out lunch or dinner with the family, enjoying the good weather, or maybe enjoying the big game on the TV. Or maybe your favorite team in town, the Action Sports Jacks team. This is great, except for when it's really hot or the bugs start coming out. But what if you didn't have to worry about that? Titan Outdoor Solutions will make your outdoor area a comfortable spot any time of the day, any time of the year. This makes too much sense. Titan Outdoor Solutions can give your home an upgrade. Customized pergolas, awnings, controlled shade, even retractable screens. The solution to beating the heat and the bugs and getting more use out of your home is Titan Outdoor Solutions. And this can even help prevent storm damage at your home. Living in Florida and living in your home is already good. Now make it great. Quality products, custom work, locally owned and operated. Visit TitanShuttersAndScreens.com or call 904-484-7580. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who's coming to your house. You know they will be well-trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important 
and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. I've been forecasting the weather for a long time, and no matter where I go, I always get asked the same question. Hey Mike, what's the weather going to be like? Hey Mike. Hey Mike. Mike, hey, what's the weather going to be like? I don't mind being asked because I always have the answer. Great day for a perfect round of golf. Hey, a little rain later today. So go ahead, ask me. Hey Mike, I'm heading out. What's the weather like tonight? It's the same question, even at home. Mike Burrish, he's got your weather answer on Action News Jacks. I like to say everybody has a story, and sometimes we're a part of other people's stories. That's the case here at Nimnick Buick GMC. My family and the Nimnick family, we purchased six different vehicles from Nimnick Buick GMC. Maybe you're in the market for a truck. Well, let me tell you about the GMC Sierra. I absolutely love mine. I've had a couple of these. This one's a 2020, but right now on 2024 GMC Sierras here at Nimnick Buick GMC, there's special financing. A year ago, we purchased a GMC Terrain for the kids. Financing rates as low as 2.9% right now for eligible buyers on Terrains and Acadias 2. Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. Nimnick Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom. Meet the fantastic people. Or shop online at NimnickBuickGMC.com. Nimnick, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Alive Credit Union cares about our community. After all, it was founded by people in our community 70 years ago by a group of Florida Blue employees. And the mission still is to inspire financial wellness and give you a financially fit lifestyle. In here, they are more than just a bank. You can find Alive in the community providing financial education to our youth, sharing programs that are geared toward building credit and rebuilding credit, and supporting causes with amazing organizations like the American Lung Association. This March, Alive Credit Union will be back for the sixth time as a longtime sponsor of the American Lung Association's Fight for Air Climb. The event is March 23rd downtown. Get your team of climbers, family, friends, co-workers. The event will be emceed by Action News Jax's Garrett Biedenbaugh. Be a part of our community and become a member of Alive Credit Union today. Find out the many ways you can be inspired in financial wellness at AliveCU. .coop. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24 7 Network. Hey, welcome back to uh, TPC Sawgrass as uh, we continue to take you all around the golf course uh, here on a Tuesday. We'll do that all week long from the Players' Championship, 10 a.m. until 1 p.m., the Brent and Austin Show. Brent Martineau here at TPC Sawgrass, Austin Lane, back in the Action Sports Jack studios. And, uh, hey, Austin probably will join us uh, in the next couple of days. We're trying to iron out some things and, and make sure we got it working. Look, I even got into, like, a, a better camera shot along the way. It only took me, like, two hours. There was, like, shade behind me, sunlight. Mm. Now we got a little... Just tree. Like, I could be in my backyard here. I was trying to give you guys a shot of the clubhouse earlier. Uh, putting out some fires, Austin. There's a lot going on here today, um, along with a lot going on in the sports world. No, I hear you, man. And sorry to hear that you're putting out fires over there. You know how it is in, uh, in the Bretton Austin studios. We're just chilling, man. Pac Man going strong. Well, Lighting's fantastic. <laughs> just chilling. Your, your writing is fantastic. That's good. No, writing. Think, uh, the Casey's writing is. Hey, oh, the lighting, lighting, oh, lighting is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were referencing your like NBA slam poetry or something. Uh, oh no, I mean week. that'll be good too. But yeah, you still have to give me a couple more days on that. The one good thing is at least we have good weather. I'm not dodging like raindrops and everything else. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, that's, that would only add to it. Isn't um, that kind of tradition but, at uh, TPC? Is there some rain usually there or not? 
You, you know what's funny, Austin, is uh, you know you think about Daytona 500. We've had a lot of that. Like when I think the Daytona 500, I feel like we we get a good amount. Uh, mm-hmm. When you think about the players in my 16 years, this has been my 16th Players Championship covering it. I don't like that's not what I think of, but I think now that the the tournaments moved from May to March, I think we get more of the variance in weather, and I think we're going to mm-hmm. see it. Like this morning was in the 40s, right? Uh, by Right now, I'm sure it's probably getting close to mid-60s to 70s. Later in the week, it's going to be in the 80s. And it's going to be very sunny and hot and warm and nice. Well, by the weekend, I think we might uh, still have decent temperatures. But I think the wind picks up some. And then the rain comes in a little bit more. So you do get that variety way more than May. May was just, like, usually hot. And, and maybe you get some thunderstorms because of that time of year. But uh, we've had a little bit of everything over these last couple of years, including a Monday finish a couple of years ago at the Players' Championship. So you're not wrong uh, about that side of it. All right, we've got a lot going on with the players. Uh, Jay Monahan uh, just uh, had his news conference. Heck, it might still be going on. And uh, we've got Military Appreciation Night here at TPC Sawgrass. Cole Swindell uh, will be the uh, performance around the 17th green, so it's always a good night to kick off the week. Practice rounds going on, and uh, the big story from a golf standpoint, Scotty Scheffler, world number one, the defending champ. He just won last week at Bay Hill, and if he putts the way he putted last week, this one's going to be a tough one for anybody to catch him. But here's the deal. Nobody has ever won back-to-back at the Players' Championship. Been doing this thing for the 50th time now, and nobody's ever gone back-to-back, which says a a lot about this golf tournament says a lot about this golf course i looked up something yesterday only nine former champs are even in the field here at the mm. players championship and i know you don't speak golf a lot i don't ask you to get involved in the golf talk too much uh austin but i am going to ask you about this tiger woods did not commit to the event he had until friday of last week to do it didn't do it his exemption is done so he may never play in the players championship again could he play his way back in absolutely but he may never play in the players championship again so um, that's what we're looking at we're looking at a golf world now with many events and maybe even many years to come at least on this level of golf not the champions tour without tiger woods a participant and there's not many there's many times over the years that people have said well this could be it this could be it Now we're almost getting to the reality of that side of things, right? Where Tiger Woods is definitely in the twilight and on his way out of uh, this great game of golf and especially on the PGA Tour level. No, he's he's in the back nine of his career, pun intended. But let me ask you this, Brent. In terms of, like, playing at Sawgrass, don't you feel like – he would want to do it one more time, kind of like a like a farewell tour, if you will. Like you saw this with with um, with Kobe. Um, you're gonna see this with LeBron. Like, there's just some guys I feel like that are they're so just captivating, where you almost have to like announce that you know this is my last time playing here, and then the crowd comes out in full effect to support. Don't you see Tiger Woods doing that, or is this is that not really key to him? Well, I think. There are so many places that you can do that, and I think that's an interesting question. I don't – this would have been it to maybe say this is my last, but I think from him as a competitor, he knows he's going to play more. So he probably thinks he's going to win again, and when he wins again, maybe he gets eligible again to play in this championship, and then he he is back here. So I think it's hard to have that definitive, hey, I'm probably never going to be back here again. Uh, I do also, also think he'll have those opportunities to do it at a place like Augusta whenever that time comes, and that will be down the road because the Masters winner can always go back and play. doesn't matter if they have a 15 handicap by that time. <laughs> they can go back well, and play uh, in that event. So he'll, he'll play in more golf tournaments for years and years to come, is my guess. Maybe just not this one. And I'll give you this background, Austin. This has been a little bit of a love-hate relationship with this golf course and this tournament over the years for Tiger. It's been a couple of good moments when he's won it. There's also been some where he just hasn't played well here. Brent, so just so we're clear, he would have to earn his way back on to playing in this tournament. He just can't show up and be like, I'm Tiger Woods. No, he can't. Uh, how are you going to you gonna bounce out Tiger Woods from the club? He made the club. Well, they, we, we, <laughs> he made the club. He, he had is this, the club. We actually had this, <laughs> we had this uh, conversation uh, last week when we were talking about, I think Gary Smith and I, and Gary knows a, a lot more about this stuff that, than I do. He's, he's been covering this for years and years, but they they really haven't changed like the exemptions for a player. 
And you wonder, like, if next year or the year after, Tiger's like, hey, I'd love to come back and play, but I'm not – can we – is there is there a loophole to get in? Would they change the exemptions? Like, would they do something, a Tiger rule of sorts, to adjust to say, hey, yeah, he's going to end up coming back and play? I don't know. That would be very quiet and behind the scenes if they did that anyway. They would never, like, publicly say that's why. But, yeah, as of now, Austin, he, he can't play in next year's Players' Championship even Give if he wants to. A- Hey, and, and this is why golf's hurting, Brent. It's because decisions like that, man. That'd be like Conor McGregor coming back and saying, hey, I want to play on the next pay-per-view, and Dana White going, oh, cool, let's go and put you on the prelims. You mean to tell me that Tiger Woods shows up to TPC wanting to play in the tournament, and they go, sorry, bud, all full, go play on the Corn Ferry Tour. Give me a break, you're Tiger Woods. Golf, this is why you're hurting, <laughs> just, to, just to let you know. Uh, yeah, well, I mean – it's, it's just part of the rules. I mean, golf has a lot of goofy stuff, and I don't know if that's goofy or not. I just think that's the way you get in, and there's no special exemptions yet. I mean, there are special exemptions at a lot of different tournaments. Those rules do change over time, so maybe we'll see if uh, right. Tiger can either play his way back in or they adjust for him to play again. But again, uh, Austin, I'm not sure he's itching to get back here and play again. I mean, he's had a great history with the course from his amateur days to the Players' Championship. But it, it, again, this isn't a course that... Every player always like, I can't wait to go play. It's tough sometimes on them. No, I hear you, man, and, and that's fine. But give them the option then, all right? If the, if the Rock can be out of wrestling for 10 years, come back and main event WrestleMania right away, Tiger Woods can play whatever tournament he wants to play in without any special exemptions or, or, or certificate. Like, give me a break, <laughs> man. What are you all doing with a PJ Tour? To no, well, I mean, am I the only one that thinks like that? It's Tiger Woods. Well... Yeah, don't, I, don't I, well I, anything. What I love about <laughs> well, I Go love your I love your reaction to it because it's an outsider look at it, and maybe a very logical look at it. Like, yeah, what are we doing here? So I yeah. get what you're saying. Yeah. Go go play and live the entire. Hey, if the PJ Tour is going to treat you like that. <laughs> I'm sure the live would be happy to happy to have you. Greg Norman would love to do some stuff with you, man. Just go to live then. Don't don't waste your time with the PJ Tour if they're going to do you like that. That's ridiculous. Uh. Hey, just in general, you mentioned some other names, right? You mentioned LeBron James, and I think this came up about a month ago where somebody asked him, like, hey, are you going to announce before you retire that you're retiring? And so the whole idea there was, will you basically say with a couple weeks left in the season or after the season I'm going to retire, or will you announce it before so you can take a victory lap of sorts. This is exactly what you're talking a little bit about with Tiger Woods. I think it's hard to do it mm-hmm. in golf. I think when you play a season sport like the NBA, Major League Baseball, you know, NFL, those traditional like seasons, you can certainly do that if you want. How do you feel about it? Like as a fan, don't you almost want that person, that player, that significant icon to take a bow every place they get? Um I get why the player would maybe struggle with that because that gets daunting and tiring and exhausting to do that in every place. But fan-wise, don't we want him to announce before and say, hey, let's go salute him one more time? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you know, fans want that to say, like, hey, I was there for his, you know, his last run or things like that. And I think LeBron James kind of come out and said that he doesn't want to do that run a la like Kobe Bryant did. But LeBron, I don't think you really have a choice, man. Like, I think you owe it to your fan base. I think you owe it to the game of basketball, you know, being one of the, if not the, I'm not going to say one of them. Okay, I'll say the second best player of all time behind Michael Jordan. Um, if, if you're going to be one of the best players of all time, you owe it to the game, the fan base, to say, hey, this is my last go around here. Come out and cheer me on if you want, because there's probably not a lot of opportunities to do that anymore uh, after this season. Hey, a couple of comments uh, to get to in the chat uh, coming off a bunch of our conversation about the Jaguars and uh, really the first two hours of the show about the NFL and uh, everything going on with the Jags. Uh, listen, let's see if I get Jayville for real says, pay Ridley, WTF, are you thinking? <laughs> he doesn't want to pay him, I guess. Let Zay okay. go back to his, uh, uh, we are okay without him. I think this guy just doesn't really like the Jags. If he doesn't want Zay Jones or Calvin Ridley, that's a pretty uh, interesting way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Still think cornerback at 17 says Duval Jags. Uh, if Arnold or Mitchell is on the board, but I also see the Jags releasing Cam, taking the best OT on the board at 17. DT is too early at 17 unless they trade down. So that was a big conversation. Like, where will the Jags go? 
in terms of um, that number 17th pick overall based on what they just did over the last 24 hours or so. And a sharpshooter says, Deertis Johnson returning to the Jaguars. And I still haven't really seen that out there, so I don't know where that is. Um, where that attribution is coming from, but maybe Casey Kurtz has. I was going to bring Casey in and see if uh, are we missing anything out there this morning. What's happened in the NFL seems a lot more quiet than the last uh, 20 hours or so, Casey. What's up, dog? Uh, I'm pretty sure Schefter has the uh, Dearness Johnson. Okay. So I well, believe then, that is. I would believe it. Oh, yeah. Official Adam Schefter, the real one. 10.8 million followers, by the way. It's a lot of humans. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, talking <laughs> running backs, is, though. That's a. A lot of that's, a, that's a pretty uh that's a valid valid report i think <laughs> yeah we have to get his attention so he can retweet us one time and then we can get some of that viewership you know what i'm saying that'd be sick mm. a little 10 million retweet come on that'd be wild uh anyway fantasy Oof. football update uh if you if you do that <laughs> your running back that you had last year probably not on the same team anymore a <laughs> uh, little bit last night a little bit this morning but dearness johnson back you probably didn't have dearness johnson just to be real with you josh jacobs packers mm. joe mixon texans you talked about that Aaron Jones, Vikings. Ooh, Green Bay's upset. Probably. Naheem Himes, Browns. Saquon Barkley, Eagles. Mm. Zach Moss, Bengals. Brent, who's making the biggest impact of those guys? Oof, good question. Um, I, I still think... I don't think Joe Mixon, by the way, in Houston. I, I like the pick for them, but I don't think uh, he's going to be the guy. You know what people are really after? It, it sounded like if you read some other reports, is Moss. Everybody, he he really established himself in Indianapolis, and I think people love the idea of him. Um, and and obviously uh, Cincinnati is where he ended up, right? So they did too. I think Jacobs could make a big move. He's an under talked about guy. I think we always like to link him and uh, Saquon Barkley as the headline guys. But I would say. Uh, I'll put my money on him from a health standpoint. I got a, I got a belief that he can stay healthy and impact them the most. I'll go with Josh Jacobs to avoid being anything uh, too obvious in that question. How about you, Austin? Oh, I'll make it obvious. Saquon Barkley. <laughs> um, I just think that you know you're adding another weapon. Like you saw what DeAndre Swift was able to do in that offense, and then you add a running back that's you know a little more explosive, a little better in the receiving game. I mean, I think the sky's the limit. Health is a big thing with Saquon Barkley, obviously. Can he stay healthy? But I think with the combination of Jalen Hurts, all those offensive weapons, um, I think Saquon Barkley can have a pretty good year. All right, so uh, for the noon crew to refresh what we did a little bit earlier at 10 o'clock, uh, I got two big things when it comes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. One, do you like what they did yesterday? And two... Where's your confidence level or thought level, and it doesn't even have to be confidence, on what's going to happen with Ridley as it pertains to the Jacks? So, Casey, I want to bring you in here, too, and get your thoughts on this. Did you like what the Jags did yesterday? Uh, I mean, are, if you're in the grading system, is this a positive grade for the Jacksonville Jaguars? Uh, I, no. No, I would say if you're talking about the three receivers that were – you know, potentially available, if you will, Calvin Ridley, T. Higgins, and Gabe Davis. I feel like they got the third of three. That's kind of where I'm at. I think Calvin Ridley, there's stuff that you don't know. There's a lot that you do know. T. Higgins, I think he's a dog. Gabe Davis, I think the advantage you get is in the biggest moments, I think Gabe Davis is showing up. He's proven that. But in the other moments, in the, you know, week 14 game against the Tennessee Titans – is he there? I don't know. So I, in my opinion, I think if you look at the other two guys and a Gabe Davis, I think they got the third of three. Uh, Austin, how about you? What do you think uh, overall about yesterday for the Jacksonville yeah. Jaguars, where they are positioned right now? Did they do well? I mean, I think overall, uh, I would give it an A. You know, I mean, obviously Mitch Morris was was kind of the spearhead of, of that, and you took care of your center position. You know, I think you, you got some help in the secondary. Now, what does that look like? We're not quite sure yet. But when you talk about Ronald Darby, this guy can play press coverage. That should fit really nicely into Ryan Nielsen's defense. You have a guy in Savage who has shown big play abilities, who has shown up for a knack of getting the football and intercepting and everything like that. With Gabe Davis, yeah. I mean, is he an upgrade from Zay Jones? 
Possibly. Can he give you those big time games? Yeah. Is he consistent? Nah. Can he catch the football? Has trouble sometimes. I think the biggest thing that I'll take away, though, Brent, and we haven't really talked about this yet, but I've talked about what this team should be looking for is more leadership, is, is more of those pillars, is more of those dogs, whatever you want to call them. I mean, you essentially bring two guys from Buffalo, and however you feel about Buffalo, they still, they're still they a winning organization. You know, now They haven't had the big one yet. They haven't been to the Super Bowl yet, but still respect the organization. You have a guy in Mitch Morris, and you have a guy in Gabe Davis who are both team captains this past season for the Buffalo Bills. So you're bringing two captains from the Bills to this locker room here in Jacksonville. I think that speaks volumes. I think from a leadership standpoint, I think you just got better. And it's hard to put a price on that sometimes, and it kind of goes to the wayside sometimes, but that must be talked about as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a good call, man. I, I, I know you've been on that, and I appreciate that. Like, that's that's – that maybe is what they are missing a little bit more of, and they're getting it. I look at it as a little different way. I think I piggyback on your thought is just say experience, right? Like I'm. It's not that I don't need young guys on my roster. I just think this team could use a little bit more guys that are longer in the tooth and and have more experience and know what it looks like. To your point about Buffalo, like they know what it takes or know what it takes to just miss. The Jags do have some of that, uh, but they haven't experienced it a lot. Even the veterans on this football team haven't experienced it a lot. They experienced it in 2022. There are multiple times last year when guys like Calvin Ridley, Evan Ingram, and others who are sitting there at 8-3 and three and playing a Monday night football game against the Cincinnati Bengals for the top seed are like, I've never been in this position before. It's awesome, but th- this is a new position. And like that's okay. It's not shame on them, but it is a new position. And let's just say this. The Jaguars as a locker room, as an organization, didn't handle that position very well. They lost five out of the last six games. So I like what you're saying there. I think overall the Jags did a good job. I, I think they, I, you know, they did some things that surprised me. And, and I kind of like that. I don't know if I should like that, but I think I like it. From the Mac Jones play Sunday, which surprised everybody, to the getting Gabe Davis and at least having that insurance policy and at least making an investment in Trevor Lawrence to Mitch Morris, which makes it feel different than running it back on the offensive line and certainly feels like an upgrade, to upgrading safety, which I did not see them doing, but they end up going to do it anyway and not standing pat at what they have on the roster. It shows me that they have really taken an internal look at what they have and are trying like heck to upgrade in as many spots as possible. The other part about this for me is really financially, and I don't look too much into the business side, but the Jags didn't have a ton to play with Austin. And if you look at it, they were able to do a lot, which showed me that, hey, the Sheriff move, the Ezra Cleveland move, the way they were able to manipulate the money and get Mitch Morse in here, and then also to get Darby in here, like these kind of moves to move other money around and figure things out. I thought they played the puzzle pieces pretty well. Like they had a good plan to play these puzzle pieces well. And I think they still have a couple other moves potentially in their back pocket, depending on how this stuff goes down. But... uh, I think it's a pretty good job by the front office and Trent Baalke in, in putting the puzzle together so far. That means nothing for September. I understand that. But at least in the time being, I thought they did the dollar stuff and the business side of this pretty well. They had a good feel for it, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you start off with this. Anytime you can be surprised, and I think surprised in a good way, um, that's very telling. You know, like, I, I didn't foresee them – being the most probably liveliest team the first couple of days in free agency. I don't think anybody foresaw that. So I'm not mad at it. It's showing me that, listen, we do have some holes that need filling. We, we do need to get better in some, sp- in some places. And, like, I'm not going to fault the team for trying that. No, do they get the right guys and everything? Will they gel? Will there be chemistry? Time will tell. But I like the fact that they're actually taking their swings at it. All right, let me uh, go around the horn one more time, bring Casey back in before we take a timeout here at the Players' Championship, live at TPC Sawgrass, the Brenton Austin Show, taking until 1 o'clock today. And really, this is the other part of it. Now we just kind of wait. What's going to happen with Calvin Ridley? I want you guys' prediction. What's what's going to happen with the wide receiver that was with the Jags? The Jags seem to covet. The latest is the Patriots are on him as well. There might be a mystery team, but nothing yet out of the Ridley camp. And the receiver market is seemingly... Well, gone a little bit quieter than most people would have imagined going into this week. Casey, what happens with Calvin Ridley? Is he gone? Is he a jag? What is it? 
I think the Jags are in play just because if it hasn't happened yet, what are they waiting for? But at the end of the day, I do think one of the super desperate, down, horrendous teams pays Calvin Ridley a lot of money. I don't know why they haven't yet, but you just look at Panthers, you look at Patriots, like they need anybody that catches the football regularly. And I think at some point they get desperate enough and pay up. Austin, what happens to them? You know, I think as time goes by and you don't really hear a lot, it's better for the Jaguars. Um, I'm just going to speak this into existence real quick. I think Calvin Ridley comes back, but the only way I can see him not coming back is if the Jacksonville Jaguars trade two first-rounders for Justin Jefferson. <laughs> Let me speak it into existence, Brent. Where did that one come from? Well, you know Jefferson wants out of Minnesota. He's got Sam Donald throwing the ball. You think he's going to want to resign a contract with the Minnesota Vikings anytime soon? What? Uh, Dude, just wait. I mean, mark mark I, my words. I, go ahead and timestamp this. In the next three or four days, there's going to be requests for Justin Jefferson to be traded. Just just wait and see. You think he wants to be in Minnesota now with Sam Darnold? Come on. Uh, probably not, but I just I thought you were going to go like T. Higgins when you brought that well, up. Yeah, well, like yeah, T. Higgins. Justin Jefferson way. No, T. Higgins is good. As, hey, listen, you know I feel about T. Higgins, but I'm saying Justin Jefferson, you get him too? Let's go. Brent, I'm just trying to right, speak so it into existence, my, man. I, I get it. I like it. I okay, like it. I, okay. My thoughts on Ridley. I can do two different things on Ridley here. I can tell you that, hey, I'm going to either be right or I'm going to be wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> the right part would be he's not going to get back to Jacksonville. I've never thought he would be back in Jacksonville. I agree with you, though. The more this plays out, the longer this shakes out, the, the slower that market is. Certainly indicates that they could be in play more. And we're seeing the reports that indicate it, too. So that makes you feel a little bit better about it. If you weren't seeing the Jags link to him anymore, especially after the Gabe Davis signing, then I doubt you would feel that way, right? Uh, so that's one element of it. I... I also don't mind being wrong here. I mean, this would be a hell of a, a get for Trent Baalke if he's able to keep that second-round pick and win this battle for Calvin Ridley, who on Sunday night looked like he would be in demand by a bunch of teams and get a bunch of money. I don't think the Jaguars will overpay here. I do think the first-round wide receiver is certainly in play for me to be younger, cheaper option and still add because the Jaguars have enough at wide receiver at least to go into the draft and then add a little bit more. Uh, so I don't know which way it's going to go. Uh, I in, I will stick with I don't think they end up with him. Um, but I also, when Casey brings up they'll go with a uh, like a, a starving team for a wide receiver, let's just take the Patriots. This is where I really feel like Calvin in Florida, Calvin in Jacksonville, Calvin playing for Trevor Lawrence. I'm not telling you hometown discount, but I got to believe he'd much rather be here than playing in New England, guys. Like, if, that, if it comes down to, like, the Patriots and Jags, the money's got to be way different to get him to New England in my, in my estimation. No, I agree. It's one thing we're talking about Kansas City versus Jacksonville. I think, you know, you can make an argument Kansas City has advantage, just quarterbacks, championship pedigree, all that stuff. If we're talking about New England, who's in rebuild mode right now, yeah, advantage uh, Jacksonville all day. So, you know, when those teams popped up and there were some rumors saying those teams that were interested, that the Tennessee Titans, the New England Patriots, the Carolina Panthers, yeah, my, my eyes lit up a little bit because that's good for the Jaguars. That's good for Calvin Ridley coming back. And Listen, I'm not ready to call it and say he's coming back because there could always be another team in the mix, right? Like I think the, the the Jets make a lot of sense in terms of Aaron Rodgers needing another weapon, right? The, the Jets are getting ready to make a run. I think that makes sense for Calvin Ridley. But the way that it looks right now on paper, yeah, I think advantage Jaguars. Yeah, that's uh, interesting to watch. We'll keep an eye on it. All right, let's take a break from TPC Sawgrass and the Players' Championship. When we come back, there's one other question uh, that we talked about briefly at the top of the show. But a Brian Burns deal, what does it mean for Josh Allen? Like, how much money is Josh Allen going to make? Uh, what do we think about that? How soon does it get done? Did it just muddy it up? And now we have to wait until the summer, potentially, to see what's in store for a guy like Josh Allen. Uh, how do we feel about that part of the equation? We'll talk about it when we come back live from the Players' Championship. The Brenton Austin Show taking until 1 o'clock here on a Tuesday. I like to say everybody has a story, and sometimes we are a part of other people's stories. That's the case here at Nimnick Buick GMC. My family and the Nimnick family. We've purchased six different vehicles 
from Nimdick Buick GMC. Maybe you're in the market for a truck. Well, let me tell you about the GMC Sierra. I absolutely love mine. I've had a couple of these. This one's a 2020, but right now on 2024 GMC Sierras here at Nimdick Buick GMC, there's special financing. A year ago, we purchased a GMC Terrain for the kids. Financing rates as low as 2.9% right now for eligible buyers on Terrains and Acadias 2. Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. Nimnik Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom. Meet the fantastic people. Or shop online at NimnikBuickGMC.com. Nimnik, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. The friendliest golf course in town, the Golf Club at Southampton. Local golfers have no shortage of options when it comes to picking a course to play here in Northeast Florida year round. Yet time and time again, I find myself here at the Golf Club at Southampton, easy to get to off 210 in St. Johns County. It's family owned and operated and renowned for being one of the area's most player friendly. That's just one of the reasons we hold the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18 charity golf tournament here each fall. The Mark McCumber design layout is great for all skill levels of golfers, from the guys who bomb it a mile on the range to golfers like me who are just happy to put it in the fairway, which Southampton has very accommodating fairways. And if you need new clubs, come down to the Pro Shop. They'll fit you up and get you a nice new set, like they did for me. For more information on membership or to book a tee time and see for yourself, head over to GolfSouthampton.com or call the clubhouse at 904-287-7529. The Golf Club at Southampton. It's the official home of the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18. Make it your home for golf too. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who is coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. Thank you for making Action News Jacks the best in Jacks and Folio's Best of Jacks 2023. Best TV station, best TV newscast, best TV morning show. Chandler Morgan voted best TV anchor. The Chief Mike Burrish voted best meteorologist. And Brent Martineau voted best TV sports anchor. And while you're on the go, best news website and best local blog, The Burrish Blog. Thank you for making Action News Jacks local coverage you can count on. Stop by the new car sales event happening right now at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. $500 in a job gets you and a Kia. And Michael Montiero and the staff here at Greenway Kia are here to make it happen. Experience great customer service and become a part of their family. And while you're here, check out the Kia Forte GT line. Full of comfort, innovation, and has driver assist technology. And how about the affordable new Kia EV9, the fast charging, all new electrical SUV with high performance capability. Three row seats with 304 miles of maximum driving range. Over 1,000 new Kia models, some starting at $199 a month. And as always, get the 10 year, 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty. Come shop at Greenway Kia at the Avenues, located on Phillips Highway. You can shop online at GreenwayKiaAtTheAvenues.com. And remember, $500 and a job gets you in a Kia at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. 
Uh, let's look at that Jaguars uh, 2023 season. Uh, the schedule will come out in early May, and then we can change that board, get the W's and L's out of there, and then uh, look forward to the 2024 season. We obviously know uh, who the opponents will be. A lot of discussion, by the way. Jags obviously play in London maybe for a second straight year, two games. And I think uh, Chicago makes some sense on the schedule. They're playing over there, so that one adds up. And then there's some people predicting, and I don't even know how they figured out. I don't know where this came from, uh, but I did see a couple of tweets about it. There was somebody figuring out that the Jets could be the game that they play over at Wembley and then play Chicago. So I guess that's the early prediction when it comes to the schedule about a couple of games uh, in London. You know what's pretty wild, Austin, is that the players really have – this group of players really embraced London. Like, they thought – like the season changed with that trip away from Jacksonville and they got to kind of build chemistry and they were one and two at the time and they changed it. And obviously the season did change a bit because they won two games over in London. So they went from one and two to three and two. But it kind of surprises me that they embrace London to the point they do being over there for like 10 days. Seems like a major inconvenience for a player. Yeah, especially, you know, if you have families and everything kind of being away from them. But hey, who knows? Maybe some dark, you know, mild weather and some fish and chips can do good for the soul maybe it can turn the whole team around so you never know <laughs> well it is part of it though right i mean that whole thing is you got to have the mentality i mean you've got to embrace it and maybe doug did a really good job of pounding that part in like if you're like the bills obviously didn't br- embrace it remember they lost that game they were complaining about jet lag and all this stuff and if you do that you're at a huge disadvantage probably anyway um and then you just add to it if you're in the wrong mentality no, without a doubt. I mean, it's something you have to embrace, and I think having to go through it year by year only helps you, right? You become more acclimated to it. Teams that have to go to London every what, every once in six or whatever years, um, they're at a disadvantage, right? Especially if you have to be there back-to-back weeks, you get acclimated even more. So it is an advantage for the Jaguars. Obviously, you know, I think Jaguars fans would say you're giving up a home game and that that's that whole ordeal, but nevertheless – if you keep on winning there, you want to call it a competitive advantage if you want, but as long as they keep on winning, keep on making money, it is what it is. Uh, a couple of quick thoughts. I just saw a tweet from, uh, I think Adam Schefter said it, or maybe he reported it and uh, saw somebody else bouncing back around it. And we were talking about Justin Fields earlier, and it says that most teams that want to trade for Justin Fields see him as a backup. I said this yesterday. When Kirk Cousins' deal went down with Atlanta, obviously a more proven quarterback – uh, Austin, but to spend that kind of money on a 35-year-old quarterback that's not mobile, I really think it said a lot about how Atlanta felt about Justin Fields, but now we're starting to figure out the rest of the league. Not very high on Justin Fields. I guess not. A little surprising. Um, I think that his best years are still ahead of him and everything, and you're probably going to see him now in a backup quarterback role when I thought he would for sure be a starter, whether it's Pittsburgh, whether it's Atlanta, and yeah, the it's not really hot right now in the, in the Justin Fields market. So if you're looking for big names still left on the um, free agency market, Ryan Tannehill they put on this list. I guess that's the biggest QB name out there. Uh, Derrick Henry, a lot of links to Baltimore. Calvin Ridley, of course, all eyes on him. Gerald Everett, uh, Tyron Smith, Kevin Zietler, uh, the guard, Connor Williams, center, DJ Reader, defensive line, Danell Hunter, I think probably is the biggest name, along with maybe Patrick Queen at linebacker, Kendall Fuller, Justin Simmons, Deontay Hardy. So uh, just some of uh, the big names out there still in free agency. A lot of eyes on Calvin Ridley. All right. So, oh, bro, oh, speaking of Calvin Ridley, we, we, have a little, we have a little Schefter news here with Calvin Ridley going on right now. Oh. Came out three minutes ago. Oh. Yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll break got? the news. Uh, Adam Schefter reporting, New England is pushing to sign free agent wide receiver Calvin Ridley, but sources believe that he is currently prefers to return to Jacksonville and has been discussing a deal with the Jaguars. Well, how about that? That is All right, let's stay on that. I got Josh the Allen Brent on my Martin mind, too. The Brent Martin tour that. coming out. Can't wait. <laughs> Look at the camera. Why Look at you? the camera and laugh at us again, Brent. Can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to see what happens with that clip. Um, We got receipts. (laughs) We were just talking about this. I mean, just talked about it before the break. I I just asked you guys. And again, this this actually does go back to my laughing clip. Because (laughs) this would be, this really, seriously, this would be, an unbelievable turn of events, in my opinion, in Jacksonville. I don't think you can underrate that. 
Because think about it on so many levels. First of all, from a Trent Baalke level, no confidence in the guy. Nobody's got confidence in the guy. Everybody wants him out. Everybody says he's killing the organization. Well, he's just done the last 24 hours and handled things pretty well, I think, according to most. But if he gets the Ridley deal done in the way that it would end up happening, then... He looks really good in that, Austin. I mean, to not give up the second-round pick, to get him back. And then there's another element to me here. The Jags organization, which, again, has not always been the greatest organization. They would get a guy picking them over an organization like the New England Patriots. And while that could be just for weather and familiarity, who cares what that part says? They could pick the Jags over the Patriots? Who would have thought that any time in the last 25 years? So Ridley potentially coming back, if he does come back to Jacksonville, man, it's a, there's a lot of optics, perception things that this really changes maybe about the Jacksonville Jaguars and even Trent Baalke. Man, I mean, some teams are playing... Checkers, Trent Baalke playing four-dimensional chess, it seems like, um, if he can somehow pull this off. Yeah, it would be wild. And, and maybe, who knows, maybe Schefter was listening to our, our, our show the entire time, Brent. Maybe he just, maybe we're the sources. Maybe maybe Schefter's just referring to us in terms of saying, hey, we think Ridley wants to be here over New England. Maybe we're the sources right now. That's how big our show is getting. Obviously, Adam Schefter has an Action Sports Jacks 24-7 app. <laughs> now, if they can somehow pull this off, and you get Calvin Ridley. I don't want to like question anything, Brent, because it, it would be a great move. And I'm not trying to like get all gloomy with, you know, instead of when we should be sunshine and rainbows. But if you bring back Calvin Ridley and you get a first round pick and a second round pick, did they not make a, a proper calculation then with Gabe Davis? And could they have gone in the first, second round, got a receiver at a cheaper price? And now your wide receiver room is looking like Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, and whoever you draft. Uh, okay, do that. So, so the negative spin potentially on this is that they got Ridley back, though they didn't need Davis, and you could have drafted Davis's position or Davis's. Um, you know, spot on the roster for a cheaper version, kind of like we were talking about Ridley. Do you go spend the money on Ridley or do you go draft a cheaper, younger option, right? Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, yeah, and I'm not trying to be like a negative thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm saying an alternative could have been you bring back Calvin Ridley, you have a first-round pick, a second-round pick, and then you draft the guy in that first, second round, and now your wide receiver core is Christian Kirk, Calvin Ridley, and whoever you draft. Yeah, I, I, I think, um, I, I guess that's a way you could look at it. I just don't know how in all of this landscape, once Monday happened and they didn't have anything done with Ridley and they weren't going to do anything with Ridley, most likely because his representation probably wanted to test the market and I think the Jags still didn't want to give up that second round pick. I, I don't know how you could predict that. So I like the Jags getting Davis. And what happens is if they get Ridley and Davis and have Kirk and Ingram and ETN, I think most people feel like, well, the fall guy there is going to be Zay Jones. So you're going to free up some money. And if you did free up Z Zay Jones and you release him, you free up so like $4 million, I think, is the cap savings. But then I still think you can go get a young receiver in the draft, Austin. I don't think you necessarily get it maybe in the first round, but I do mm -hmm. think you start looking toward the future and partnering up uh, Trevor Lawrence with Gabe Davis, who's like 25 years old, and then your next young guy that will eventually replace the Kirks and the Ridleys as a cheaper option. Again, as I mentioned earlier in the show, Trevor's going to be on a much more expensive deal in the, uh, well, near future. Yeah, no, th that's true. You know, you always have to plan for the future. But the way that it looks right now, man, we talked about it. This most important thing this offseason is the progression of Trevor Lawrence. And whether it's Gabe Davis, whether it's a first-round pick, second-round pick wide receiver, whatever the case may be, if you can get Calvin Ridley back here, and once again, from a draft perspective, keep that second-round pick, I mean, it may not affect you know Trevor Lawrence directly, but at the end of the day, you're getting better quality players because of that move. Yeah, I, I just think the, the bottom line is here, if they aren't able to keep this and get Ridley, what it says about the organization, what, what I asked yesterday, asked this question, I was like, is this place right now more toxic than it was coming out of the 2021 season? Legitimate question. I think some people think yes to that answer. I'm not sure I do, but it's damn close, so close that I asked the, the question. 
And then here we are 48 hours later, potentially by the time we get to tomorrow and have our show, that the Jags are bringing back Ridley. They get Gabe Davis. They change the center in Mitch Morse. They get a little younger at kick returner in one of their premier positions that Jamal Agnew was very good at. Uh, they get better at corner or at least cheaper option, but fill that Band-Aid up. They upgrade center. I mean, there are a lot of things to like about what the Jags are doing. And in the meantime, all of that going on, they also are helping their quarterback by adding Ridley back and also Gabe Davis. I just think it changes just so much of the perception of what it's been like since the Jags went on a collapse uh, and lost five out of their last six games. And I'm not telling you that it's going to change and feed all of a sudden this crazy optimism into Trent Bulky, the GM. But I'll mm -hmm. tell you what, man, if they get Ridley, it'll be a hell of a recovery from an optic perception point of view for Trent Bulky. Brett Martineau breathing a sigh of relief knowing that now he doesn't have to go so hard to get people on the Trent Balky bandwagon because Trent Balky's doing it himself. <laughs> hey, good day for you too, huh, Brent? Right? Because the mental gymnastics <laughs> that Jaguars fans have had to do in terms of how do we feel about Trent Balky? Are we bringing back those clown emojis? How are we doing? Well, if he pulls this off, he might help himself a little bit, might have to tolerate him for another year, and obviously makes your job a lot easier of peddling the Trent Bulky narrative down all our throats. No, it actually uh, it just my Venmo count was was low. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so that's what maybe it does. Well, hey, listen, there was a there, yesterday, Austin. There was a, a comment somewhere out there on social media, and I read this, and I almost commented on it, but I was like. I was like, I'm not going to do it. The When they signed Gabe Davis and that news came through, I think somebody was like, yeah, but he only does this, 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 or had this, this, this. And I'm like, man, every move is yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's what it could change. Like, I, they're trying to help Trevor out. They're trying to get an insurance policy. Like, I understand the way this is. You cannot guarantee the Ridley thing. You go get Gabe Davis. He helps you in the run game, helps you in the long ball game. You're looking for somebody to help you in the long ball game. 16.9 yards per catch. Like, this guy can help you. Forget about the yeah buts. Develop them, make them good, have Trevor make them good. But that's what I'm talking about. Every move that was made is criticized. And I think all of a sudden in the last 36 hours, the collection of moves, the compilation of moves, and now the idea that Ridley could return, and it's just an idea right now. I think that just has a little bit at least changed the feeling in Jacksonville about this organization for the time being and what the front office is doing. That doesn't win you games, by the way, in September. There will be another evaluation come the season on really what took place. But it's also nice to not be, uh, I guess, everything, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Yeah, and once again, I mean, keep in mind, this is free agency, right? If, if guys were legit and guys were 100%, those teams would try to keep them. So every player is going to come in with something about them that maybe True. players don't like a little bit. At the end of the day, once again, it goes back to Trevor Lawrence. And the way this sits right now, if they can somehow you know fleece and get Calvin Ridley back, to me, then there's no excuses. I mean, once again, offensive line's got to play better, right? And we'll see what that looks like. Cam Robinson, what's the plan there? Walker Little, time will tell. But you have your offensive weapons now of guys to throw to. You have a running game that's all shored up. So now, Trevor Lawrence, the question is, man, there's really no more excuses. You got to stay healthy, number one. That's the most important thing, knock on wood. But now you got to show us what you got because you've all the pieces to be successful. Derrick Henry's going to the Ravens. That came out in the last five to ten minutes. And all I can think about, and I want to get to Josh Allen still before we end the show. We'll get ten minutes left. Has there ever been a more perfect fit organization and player at this stage than Derrick Henry Austin? I mean, that just seems like the well, way his style is, the way they play. I mean, maybe you could say like a Pittsburgh Steelers or somebody, but even the Ravens feel more physical and they want to they want to beat you up a little bit. Ah, oh, man, Henry and the Ravens just seems like match made in heaven. No, without a doubt, and I'd be lying to you if I thought you know in a in a perfect world, um, in another universe. Could Derrick Henry come to Jacksonville because Jacksonville can't run a third one to save their life or a fourth one to save their life? You put Derrick Henry back there and just set it and forget it, if you will, but obviously that's not very realistic. No, and it makes the most sense for Derrick Henry to go to Baltimore. I was thinking maybe Philadelphia a little bit as well, um, just because you know, they like to tote the rock, but no, 
Baltimore is the landing spot for Derrick Henry. Uh, I'm happy for him. You know, you saw what they got out of Gus Edwards um, in terms of the Gus bust and everything. Now you upgrade that position with Derrick Henry. I mean, it's only going to help Lamar Jackson. It's only going to help that team. And just like that tough, gritty, hard-nosed runner, I mean, he fits right in with that city, fits right in with that mentality that uh, John Harbaugh brings to the table. Hey, awesome. What is, what more? How much more does he have left, do you think, Derek? And what does he need to do for this to be successful? I mean, like, he doesn't have to go nuts. He doesn't have to be the, pri- the featured guy. I mean, that's not – he has been that for a long time. But he does not have to be that at this stage of his career. I'm just wondering what it looks like for Derek Henry to be like, okay, this really worked. This was, this was a good fit. And, heck, with all their injuries to running backs, it might just simply be stay healthy <laughs> there in Baltimore. No. Yeah, and it's it's wild, man. Even when I was getting ready to count out Derrick Henry this season, saying, man, he might have regressed a little bit. He plays the Jacksonville Jaguars last game of the year, and, and you saw what he did. So he still has some left in the tank. I'm not going to count him out anytime soon. It's just it's weird, though, man. It seems like when you're a running back and when it goes, it goes quickly. I think Dalvin Cook could be the most recent example of that. A guy who in Minnesota was getting all the reps, getting all the touts, getting all the accolades, goes to New York, and he's forgotten about. You know, he's he's a trivia question now, it seems like. So I think Derrick Henry is going to have success in, in Baltimore. That that team is too good. That offense is too successful for him not to be successful. And I think it takes some pressure off of Lamar Jackson now as well because the biggest thing with Lamar Jackson is keeping him healthy, right? So if Derrick Henry can carry the rock 20, games, 20 times a game, take some pressure off of Lamar Jackson, a little more throwing now, keep, keep Lamar Jackson upright, that's only good for the Ravens as well. Yeah, it's a two-year, $16 million deal, by the way, for Derrick Henry. That's a good amount of money for a guy at his age, $9 million guaranteed uh, in 2024, and according to Albert Breer, a max of $20 million. So uh, it's that's a good deal for Derrick Henry as, as you get older in the running back age. One, one note about what just took place over the last 24 hours, it's crystal clear the running back market in this draft – And the linebacker stock as well in the draft, probably not very high, Austin, because a lot of those guys got off the board early in this free agency. And with running backs moving all over the place and getting off the board, I mean, that doesn't fit really the narrative of the NFL right now. So I think it says a lot about the draft and what's available. Not a lot to trust, I think, in the running back position. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, I feel like running backs are, I mean, I still feel like they're disrespected. Right, but I think Christian McCaffrey is kind of making a change of that. Not not every running back is Christian McCaffrey at the end of the day, but it goes to show you when the game's on the line. If you're in the playoffs and you need to win, sometimes you have to rely on that running back, and you want a good one back there who's going to be reliable, who can get you that dub. We have a uh, interesting comment from as Brent's taking some sips. Um, Akiva Hoffman of the Jaguars saying Jaguars without Ridley made playoff run and Super Bowl contenders. Jaguars with Ridley offense got worse and didn't even make playoffs. He's a cancer and a head case. Sounds like Robert Kraft's got a burner account going, everybody. Listen to Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Hey, Robert, nice try, man. Go buy some more shoes. Get off our stream. Busted. Get off our stream. Busted. Get off our stream. Can thought you gonna, a thought you pull get a fast one. Stream? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, like get off that. our lawn. Get off our stream. <laughs> yeah. Get there off go. our stream. There's got to be some. Hey, sales team, get on that, please, if you're listening. There's got to be something there. Uh, I think we can have some fun with that one. Hey, uh, I, I want to end the show with this because we, we talked about it briefly at the beginning. But I think I want to get back to Josh Allen. The Brian Burns deal says a whole lot to me. I still think the Nell Hunter's out there. I think the Jags all of a sudden, uh, to me, after they band-aid some of this stuff up and they make some of these acquisitions, what's glaring to me is really the pass rush situation. They're very top-heavy. They're fantastic there with Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen coming off a heck of a year. But they don't have anything else. And so what else are you going to do? But you have to take care of the first domino. And the domino is Josh Allen. Josh Allen, franchise tagged. When will they come up with a deal? And how muddy does the Brian Burns deal make it? Does this really extend now for the next few months? Five years, $141 million deal for uh, Burns, according to Albert Breer. $25 million at signing bonus, 75 or $6 million guaranteed. Uh, $43 million altogether in 24. 66 million over the first two years, 90 million over the first three years. I know I'm giving you a bunch of numbers, but the bottom line is this number 28.2 million APY, average per year. If he's 28.2, what's the deal look like for 
Josh Allen. Does it actually get five years, $150 million? Is that where we're going to go, Austin? Is it as clean cut as that? $9 million more in total money than Brian Burns and $30 million APY? Do you think that's where it lands? I mean, yeah, I think we're talking about, theoretically, you said Brian Burns is getting 28? 28.3, right? Was what uh, 28.2 is the average per year, yep. I mean, do I dare say $30 million a year then for Josh Allen? I think that makes sense based off the numbers, based off of what he did last season. Could that take a long time to figure out? Yeah, I mean, and it's funny, right? We're all getting ready to give Trent Bulky his flowers now. We're back on board. The, the roller coaster of emotions are going back and forth. But lost in all of this, and lost in this free agency, all these signings, is Josh Allen. And what becomes of Josh Allen now? And, you know, I think it would be very ballsy of Josh Allen to play on that franchise tag when you're getting geared to make, you know, 30-something million dollars possibly a year. So how fast can they get a deal done? Will he choose to sit out training camp if they don't get a deal done? And what's the story going forward? That could be huge because keep in mind, like you just said, Brent, their depth right now is very, is very thin at edge rusher. And if you don't have Josh Allen in training camp, if this is going to go on a long time, what does that look like then going forward? Nah, the deal gets done, man. I don't think there's. I okay. just think it gets a little harder to get it done. I think it takes a little longer than people think. And at this stage, that's probably okay with how everything transpired. Listen, this could all come up roses for the Jaguars. I think that's why these two are tied together in a lot of the conversation. We've got like 90 seconds left in the show, Austin, here on a Tuesday. But by the time we get back on Wednesday, the Jaguars, I mean, they could have Calvin Ridley back in the stable. I mean, that is, that just seems so far-fetched. Uh, but... Uh, the latest report, if, if you're just jumping in and you missed it, is the Patriots want him, but Ridley is kind of trying to get back to Jacksonville instead of go to New England. I mean, that's basically the tone out of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then Josh Allen will get done. Josh Allen will get done at some point. It's just a matter of how much that thing is, and good for Josh. He's going to make even more money. Uh, it's definitely quieted down in the NFL, but here's another one to keep an eye on too. Danell Hunter, Jags have been rumored to be around him for over a year. It looks like the Atlanta Falcons are in on that front. Uh, so a lot to watch still, Austin, over the next 24 hours. Brent, yeah, last thing real quick, because I'm so naive to this and I know it doesn't exist, but the Jaguars have enough money right now to pay Josh Allen his big contract, right? Or yeah, do they, they do, because again, you got to remember, there's going to be, t- they'd move the $24 million franchise tag off, and then they would yeah. slide a lot of that money most likely around um, this year and, and push it out because of a big okay. signing bonus. So it actually would benefit them to sign them when they do to that big contract extension. All right, we got to run. Good. That's it for the Brenton Austin Show on a Tuesday. Back at it tomorrow and uh, coverage from the Players' Championship all day long with Action Sports Jacks on CBS 47 and Fox 30. Have a good day, everybody.